Hey guys how are all of you beautiful people? Hope all of you are doing great. And yes this is the next part of season 2 of creating Naruto comics in Naruto world. You can check out the first season of this amazing story in my channel and playlist. I, Akaban was graduated from the University of Arts and Design in the 21st century then suddenly traversed into the Naruto's world. By bringing my knowledge of arts and my love of Naruto comic I decided to recreate Naruto comic here. So let's start without any delay. The poison became more lethal. Tsunade who was about to enter the laboratory was the first to notice the change in the air that made her face become more serious. Orochimaru who was with Jiraiya also noticed the change due to his summoned snakes dying. And with a heavy complexion. He said the poison is too strong, and my summon snakes become useless due to it. He can collect equipment, food, and information so quickly, mainly because he summoned a large number of snakes. And without these snakes, he cannot find antidotes easily. Then we can't delay anymore, follow her. Jiraiya hearing it said with a rare decisive voice and continued, if we hesitate, we may die. Let's go. Orochimaru didn't hesitate anymore and went deep down the road. Although the little snakes have disappeared, the memory before disappearing is fed back to him, so they know where Murasaki and Sakumo are leaving. Dash. They have met, be careful. Sakumo and Murasaki fled into the place where less lethal poison is located, feeling the toxicity weakened. They stopped and looked towards their rear. This is the limit range, so let's wait here and ambush them. Murasaki said calmly. UN. Sakumo nodded, then he rummaged in his backpack that he found on the road and took all that he could use. He took out a handful of small shuriken, then also took out a few kunai and handed it to Murasaki. This is his harvest in the laboratory. This sword is for you. It is a chakra weapon. Murasaki also handed over the weapon in his hand. He can also use Kenjutsu, but compared with Hatake clan's blade technique, it's not worth comparing them. Sakumo took it without saying anything, but Murasaki knew that he was excited, just from his eyes alone that were flickering like a kid receiving their favorite toys after receiving it. Sakumo immediately injected his chakra into it to try it. Then in an instant. Tzzzzzzzzzzzzz. A flash of blue lightning covered the blade of the sword like a snake revealing a powerful and terrifying aura. But it didn't last long since he immediately stopped injecting his chakra. Seeing it, Murasaki nodded his head in satisfaction and said calmly here's the plan. We will first kill one of them from a surprise attack so we can pull the situation to 2v2. What do you think? Yes, it's a good plan, but Tsunade is very troublesome. Sakumo replied as he frowned, he and Tsunade are not teammates, but Senju clan's body and recovery ability are really scary. Even more so, Orochimaru and Jiraiya are not to be trifled with. It is easy to plan, but it is very difficult to implement. Don't care about Tsunade, the target is Jiraiya. That guy is a little weaker. Murasaki said full of fighting intents. Anyway, winning or losing the game is not that important, but the opportunity to fight Orochimaru and Tsunade is rare which made him excited. Sakumo nodded his head after pondering for a moment and then muttered seriously, Okay. But if my surprise attack can't kill one of them, then run. Of course, at least they can't get the antidote. As long as we live until the end, we will be detoxified. And we'll win. Murasaki words are what Sakumo plans, even if they can't win the fights but they still have the advantage which is the antidote they found in the laboratory. UN Sakumo held the mysterious sword tightly and hid behind the rock. 
Under transformation jutsu, he is similar to the rocks in his surroundings that made it hard for someone to find him, and with his position being hidden, it becomes more difficult to spot him. For him, a chance to kill in one blow was enough. After a while, Sakumo heard mixed footsteps in where he was hidden. Not long afterward, he saw three silhouettes running on the narrow path they took earlier, and behind the three were several puppets following them behind. The collection puppets of the first case kitsch. But what they saw made their backs cold. Because, although the puppets were following the three, their battle strength is obviously completely lost due to their condition. These puppets were obviously beaten black and blue by someone due to their body being broken or their legs being missing. Seeing the condition of the puppets made Murasaki mumbled. These very terrifying fighting strengths that even puppet is beaten like this is obviously Tsuna doing. We really can't fight this tigress in a frontal fight. Sakumo inhaled deeply, holding his breath as he prepared for his strongest blow. The three people who were chased out all the way here, finally feel the poison lessen a little, although they can fight the puppets, doing so will only weaken them due to the poison so they have no other choice but to run. And finally, after a long chase, they saw Murasaki standing there like he was waiting for them. Tsunad who saw it stopped on her track and looked around with vigilance. Murasaki, why is it only you? Orochimaru asked as he chuckled lightly and walked in front as if he looked defenseless. I'm enough for you guys. Sakumo and I are teammates. So my role was to delay you as much as I can while he takes the antidote. Murasaki lightly said with a smile. A fool. Jiraiya shouted, then he used a hand seal with both hands, and then pressed it on the ground. Earth style, swamp of the underworld. With the use of large-scale earth style jutsu, the surrounding sand changed into a muddy swamp that made all the stones on the surrounding collapse. Sakumo who was hiding didn't panic, he closed his eyes, sensing the position of his target, and then... The moment the rocks where he was hiding collapsed due to Jiraiya ninjutsu, was also the moment he disappeared from his position. Chidori Blade A large amount of chakra is injected into the mysterious sword, and lightning condenses and transforms the blade into a silver-white blade. Using the stone as a stepping stone, Sakumo jump, and in the blink of an eye, he has rushed all the way from his hiding place to where Jiraiya's position is. In the next second, the sword that was giving a tyrannical aura was slashed down towards Jiraiya's head. Jiraiya who was still maintaining his jutsu and had no time to dodge paled when he saw the blue sword blade aiming at him. But fortunately. Bang. Tsunad who was also at Jiraiya's side quickly kicked him away saving his dear life. However. Sakumo momentum didn't stop even if his target was gone. Tzzzzzz. The blade that was aiming for Jiraiya's life instead grazes Tsunad's leg, but although it's just a graze, it was enough to immobilize her. But what Tsuna didn't expect was the lightning coming from the sword fly through Jiraiya who was sent flying. What? A lightning slash. Jiraiya who was kicked in the air exclaimed with paled face, and without any second thought he quickly stained his hand with blood, and with a quick hand seal, he pressed it on the ground the moment he landed. Summoning Jutsu. A toad was summoned but it couldn't stop the formidable power of the mysterious sword lightning slash. Bang. The toad that was hit disappeared and turned into smoke, but the chakra on the blade is highly concentrated and turned into silver light. And in the blink of an eye, Jiraiya's shoulder was slashed down splitting it from his body. Ah. Jiraiya who felt a pain that was so unbearable screamed while holding his handle's shoulder. Hovering between life and death from the pain he received. Yes. 
Although there is no real death in Akaban's illusory domain, but the pain is real. Jiraiya was in a cold sweat and almost lost his mind from the pain coursing through his body, but he still gritted his teeth while enduring the pain. Sakumo the one who did it all didn't have the time to finish the two who he has injured since he can't activate the Chidei blade the second time in a short time. But the main reason was actually, although he didn't receive damage, his current condition is also not that good that even moving was difficult for him. Infusing that amount of chakra to the Mysterio sword was not a joke since it takes a great toll on his body that moving made it difficult for him. So he can only wait for his teammates to rescue him or die from his opponent's attack. Dash. The surprise attack only happens in a few seconds so Murasaki was stunned that made him not respond quickly. But seeing Sakumo's pale face made him immediately move. Using a flickering jutsu made him reach Sakumo's side quickly, as he flicks Shuriken in Tsunade's direction blocking her way and he jumped up from the place distancing themselves from their enemy's position. Without catching Murasaki, Orochimaru jumped out of the sand and quickly used a hand sealed with both hands, followed by the expansion of his mouth, spouting a powerful air bomb aiming at the two. Windstyle underscore Great Vacuum Sphere a melee took place in an untimely position. Tsunade's leg was injured that which made her unable to move temporarily. But it's not a problem for her since with the use of healing jutsu that she learned from her grandma and with her bloodline, in just a few minutes, her bloody leg stops bleeding and can move once again. And the one who has a severe injury was of course Jiraiya who has lost his arm. For an ninja. Losing an arm means that it is impossible to use ninjutsu, plus the highly lethal toxic in the air made him useless. Sakumo who receive a pill from Murasaki can move once again, and although he was breathing heavily he still looked back and glanced at Jiraiya, he knows that he was finished but he still threw a handful of kunai that pierced Jiraiya's legs to hinder them. A ninja's dying counter-attack is very likely to cause him a heavy injury if left alive and he didn't want that to happen. Ah. Damn you Sakumo, my hand, I can't use ninjutsu, now you aim my legs. Jiraiya screamed again and again, but he can't do anything to him since he can't use ninjutsu which made him know how useless he is in this battle. As expected of Sakumo but you will still lose here. Tsunade said as Chakra surges on her hand. Her wounds are recovering very quickly, so she was already ready to fight. Senju clan's physique is abnormal. Sakumo cursed secretly. He knew very well that he cannot defeat Tsunade with his current condition so. He turned around and in a flash disappeared. His actions are outside of the Murasaki plan, but now they have injured Jiraiya heavily, they have completed the part of their plan. So Murasaki jumped into the air and used the front of the armor of his body armor to resist the great vacuum sphere of Orochimaru while at the same time using its impact to quickly withdrew from the scene. Using my ninjutsu to run, this guy. Orochimaru was a little surprised. Even if the body armor has a protective effect, it is absolutely impossible to perfectly resist all damage, but he still accomplishes it with perfect timing. Seeing the two fled Tsunad and Orochimaru didn't after them because of Jiraiya. If they left him here, he will surely die due to the poison that was becoming more lethal once again. And that's what Sakumo wanted when he pierced Jiraiya's legs, to delay them. But what he didn't expect was Jiraiya choosing an option that not anyone can perform. You too, Chase, I'm dead. Jiraiya shouted as he stretched his remaining hand on a kunai tremblingly, he knew that he was only dead weight, and he was absolutely unwilling to drag his teammates because of him. So with a resolved. Idiot. Tsunade who saw what he was going to do was taken aback and cursed him while planning to stop it. But. 
Kai. Jiraiya stabbed himself and completed suicide in a flash. Go. Orochimaru did not hesitate and continued to chase forward. The advantage of the two of them is that they recover quickly. If the opponent is given time to rest, it will be more difficult to fight next. So without looking back, he shouted as he quickly trails the two. Jiraiya this guy. Shinosuke was stunned. As the son of the third Hokage, he still failed to become a student of the third Kage, plus Jiraiya is of this kind of virtue. To be honest, he has never been convinced of Jiraiya becoming his father's student. He has grown up too, so I can't underestimate him at all. Shinyai whispered. Of course. Of the three people, the most depressed one is Moonlight Night Dance. Seeing that even Jiraiya is so brave to sacrifice himself, but she on the other side was killed by poison mist as soon as she entered. How can she not be depressed? Ah, it hurts so much. Hey, what is this place? Jiraiya, who got teleported, was still in a state of screaming from pain and found that the surrounding area was dark. It's the viewing room. Shinosuke answered complicatedly. Oh, so you can see it all this time. Jiraiya immediately forgot the pain and looked excitedly on the screen. Hatake Sagaki glanced at him. He didn't say anything, but obviously, he didn't agree with Jiraiya's approach. It's just that there is a critical moment on the screen. He didn't say this and immediately concentrated his attention completely on the battle. The passage ahead is likely to be ambushed again. Sakumo's ninjutsu is too lethal, and using an earth-style jutsu is not possible. Orochimaru had some headaches and continued, as for my summoning jutsu. Why did Jiraiya have to suffer a serious injury? It wasn't him who launched the underworld swamp that gave Sakumo a chance. But under such a high-speed thrust, a pause in the blink of an eye is fatal. So losing Jiraiya who has those kinds of jutsu is a loss for them. It's already too late thinking about the past, and they can't necessarily launch another attack like that. Tsunad said as she rushed forward without fear. If you hesitate, you will lose. She raises her hand as the chakra flows through it and with a punch. The passage of the mountain was directly destroyed by her from one punch. This chakra enhanced strength is too terrifying, right? Not far away, Murasaki, who was running for his life, wiped a cold sweat on his forehead. According to his thoughts, he really intends to continue to ambush them in the passage and carry out drag and delay tactics. Tsunad seems impulsive, but most of the time it is a rational impulse. Sakumo said as he ran and continued, so if you can't one-hit kill her, don't do it since it will become your downfall. The more Murasaki thought about it, the more he thought it's possible. With Tsunad's perverted recovery ability, Ordinary injuries are not a threat at all for her, so unless you can one-hit kill her from a surprise attack, or deal damage to her that can't be healed in a short time then it's your win, but if you can't do it, then it will become your defeat. He does not have the kind of ability that can one-hit kill Tsunad, so the only thing he can rely on is the Chidori. Can you still use Chidori? Nah, it's impossible for a while since I can't use my hand for now. Sakumo said as he breathed heavily, in pursuit of a critical strike, he poured a lot of chakra on the sword. These chakras can exert terrifying battle strength because of the mysterious sword, but at the same time, they cause a lot of damage to his hand that was holding the sword. Let's run. Murasaki said as he heard it. The ultimate move of that level is indeed impossible without any side effects. Fortunately, the two are fast, Tsunad and Orochimaru couldn't catch up for a while. After a long time, Hidden Sand Village is right in front of them. Wait. 
the moment they entered the village, Orochimaru suddenly stopped Tsunad. This place was not very good for him. Why wait, rush and kill them? Tsunad gasped lightly and answered, then without waiting for Orochimaru, she kicked the sand and charged ahead again, aiming at the hidden place she saw. Bang! The bunkers suitable for hiding collapsed, but the formidable power she erupted is obviously not as good as before. At this time. Tzzzzzzzzzz tilde tilde. Not good. Orochimaru quickly jumped in front of Tsunad, pressing his hands on the ground. Summoning Jutsu. A huge snake emerged from the ground and nate to the sky. The silver light turns into a stream of electricity. Swish tilde. And the big snake that was summoned to block the attack was cut in the middle, as Orochimaru pulled Tsunad to avoid it with a strange posture. However, under the collapsed rock that Tsunad punched, a silhouette struggled to come out, and with his half-body buried used a jutsu. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. The extremely concentrated chakra turned into a huge fireball and was aimed at Tsunad. Amidst the roaring loud noise, sands and rock that were passed by the roaring fireball turned into lava. Tsunad herself was a little tired, and being pulled by Orochimaru at this time, she couldn't avoid it quickly and was hit by the great fireball jutsu. Ah! A miserable cry spread throughout the hidden sand village and the viewing room. Yes, Tsunad has a strong life force. But the great fireball has hit her head on, so although it didn't kill her directly, it didn't mean she was unharmed. So when she lost her ability to act, she couldn't dodge the incoming kunai that pierced her heart that directly killed her. Tsunad has been killed, the killer Mitarashi Murasaki. But, with half of his body under the rock, Murasaki is also unable to move. He ate the aftermath of Tsunad Chakra enhanced strength's kick and the damage caused by the collapse of the wall. So obviously he also suffered a heavy injury. He he he, I will leave it to you partner. Being half conscious, he was still muttering to himself. Orochimaru was silent for a moment, then threw a handful of kunai, ending Murasaki's life. Murasaki has been killed, the killer Orochimaru. A fierce battle. It seems that this battle can only let one of us alive. Orochimaru clenched his hand and said. As calm as he is, but his blood is boiling with excitement. Of course. Sakumo answered while breathing heavily, the target of the sword just now had no intention of actually killing Tsunad, so he only used half of its power unlike before when he aimed at Jiraiya. So although it's only the two of them, he knew that it's not the time to fight. Orochimaru looks okay, but he has used a lot of small summoned snakes to explore before, plus the big snake that he summoned just now, so his chakra also has not much left. But it's not a problem for him. Orochimaru took a handful of pills from his pocket. What is that? Sakumo froze for a moment and took the same pill from his pocket. This kind of bottle has many pills in one bottle, so he was sure it was not the antidote, so he didn't care and forgot to give it to Murasaki earlier. Because his consciousness was hazy when Murasaki fed it to him, he didn't recognize it at first. But it seems it's a restorative pill. So he did not hesitate, he took out a few and poured them into his mouth. In an instant, Sakumo felt that both his chakra and physical strength had recovered a lot, and the physical pain seemed to be less serious. But this effect is only temporary. Sakumo took a deep breath and held the mysterious sword. Sakumo, I have no reason to lose in this battle. Orochimaru indifferently said. Psychological tactics are useless to me. So don't bother. Hatake Sakumo said as he ran to Hidden Sand Village. 
Hidden Sand Village does not have a poison mist. As long as the antidote is taken to eliminate the previous residual toxicity, it will become his home field. I won't give you a chance. As Orochimaru spoke, he used hand sealed with both hands at the same time, and in an instant. Wind style, vacuum wave barrage. The continuously shooting wind blade blocked Sakumo's escape direction. And while spraying the wind blade, he was constantly approaching Sakumo. And his hand was already equipped with a gauntlet that he used to fight against Shinosuke. Close combat. Sakumo understood the meaning, and while avoiding the vacuum wave barrage, he clenched the hilt of the sword. The two approached a certain distance, and at the same time increased their speed. Dang. The gauntlet and the mysterious sword collided, making a crisp sound. Weapon. Sakumo was a little surprised and quickly withdrew his strength to retreat. Orochimaru chased immediately, with his fist as quick as lightning, plus he used the soft body transformation that made his attack unpredictable due to it. A weapon is truly troublesome. Sakumo kept swinging his sword to resist, but Orochimaru's fist attack was too fast, and he gradually became unable to resist. As a last resort. Chidori flow. Sakumo used his Chidori on his sword and swung it. With the sudden appearance of the lighting on the sword, Orochimaru immediately backed away. However, it is just a normal swing. But even with a normal sword, the formidable power and speed are quite scary. So if it weren't for him taking a step back, Orochimaru's hand might be injured. Blade Technique Orochimaru's expressions became grave. Hatake clan used to be samurai, but unlike other samurai, after the ninja era began, they chose to integrate the chakra system into their technique and gradually created a more powerful ninja blade technique. Blade technique is not fancy, they are just fast, accurate, and ruthless, but with the mix of the lightning style chakra into it, it will be a different story. The speed of the sword and the formidable power become even more amazing, not to mention the paralyzing effect it has. The successive swordsmanship does not give a chance for gasp for breath at all. The most troublesome thing for Orochimaru is that the buzzing sound it made from time to time was very deceptive, and it was impossible to predict whether it was a Chidori blade or not. Although his gauntlet is strong, he was still at a disadvantage due to its range compared to the sword, so he gradually fell into the losing end after successive battles. Orochimaru, you lost. Sakumo spoke while swinging his sword. Laughable. Orochimaru who was breathing heavily answered, unwilling to admit defeat, but. In an instant, the sword light skiro kitted. The blade flashed by and Orochimaru gained new injuries. Too fast. Orochimaru had a hard time resisting and was shocked. But then, Sakumo's sword slowed down again. When the two were attacking and defending, the sword suddenly burst out with the formidable power and the speed of the Chidori blade exerted a short and terrifying short-range thrust. Later on, Sakumo's sword speed was fast and slow. Whether fast or slow, the formidable power was still terrible. With the frequently changing rhythm, Orochimaru couldn't tell the next pace. Will it be fast or slow? While thinking about it, Sakumo didn't give him a chance, and finally. The sword made a quick thrust with lightning on its blade directly cutting Orochimaru's throat without giving him a chance to dodge. Orochimaru has been killed. The killer had take Sakumo. At the same time, Sakumo is also unable to move. His chakra is exhausted and his hands are almost useless due to the after effect. If it's in the real world, his hands will be crippled for real. After that, he trembled and took the antidote without groaning noise from pain. Congratulations! You've got a chicken dinner. 
Wow. I didn't expect that at all. Moonlight Knight Dance said in admiration. As the same Kenjutsu practitioner, she also knows best what kind of predicament Orochimaru faced. Swords that are fast and slow cannot be predicted easily in advance because of their unusual timing. It's too messy. On the other hand, Hatake Sargeki who is an expert practitioner said with a frown and is not satisfied with the performance of Orochimaru and Sakumo. It's over. Although it is only an illusory domain game, the situation inside is enough to expose many problems for him to see. The rest of them may not see much because of the disparity in strength and experience, but as an elite jonin, Hatake Kakashi understands it all at first sight. Yes. After that, Akaban dispelled the Genjutsu on all of them that made everyone retain their consciousness. However, this is the real illusory domain after all, and the real five senses will cause certain mental damage. Therefore, except for Sakumo's father, all of them were a little sluggish when they returned to the real world. Hateful, I didn't expect to be killed by you brat. Tsunad said as she stared at Murasaki in dissatisfaction. In terms of frontal combat battle, Murasaki is not her opponent. Who knows that this guy is fighting risking his life while taking his opponent first. In this regard, Murasaki and Sakumo are not at all proud. This is just an illusory domain game. If it happens in real life, many tactics they use inside the illusion domain cannot be implemented easily like that time. For example, using his own life in exchange for his opponent's death. Accomplishing it in real life is not that easy as he does it on the domain since it's his life we're talking about. As for the three people who got eliminated first. At this moment, they wish everyone would forget about them, otherwise, it would be too shameful. Seeing how energetic you all are, is that mean you are all satisfied with yourself? An indifferent voice instantly silenced the surrounding. Sagaki glanced at them for a while and no one dared to look at him at all. After all, no one dared to say that he was satisfied, even Sakumo, that one who won the game. Orochimaru, keep a distance in the battle. So that your opponent cannot kill you in one blow. Tsunad, be more mindful in the battle. Jiraiya also. Hatake Sagaki said coldly. He started lecturing them while also pointing out their mistakes with no trace of politeness with his extremely sharp words. He basically commented on everyone, including Moonlight Night Dance, and at every point, he can say a suggestion suitable for the other side. At last, he looked towards Hatake Sakumo. As the winner of this game, he should be rewarded, but it didn't concern Hatake Sagaki at all. And in fact, his words were particularly harsh on him, it's stupid to fight that way. He said. Yes, father. Sakumo did not refute, accepting criticism obediently. Hatake Sagaki looked at him, and after a moment, he pulled out the short sword from his waist. Look at my sword. After he finished speaking, Sakumo stared at the sword. This blade is very ordinary, without any fancy decoration, but it was so fast when his father wielded it that he knew that it's impossible to dodge when it suddenly aimed at him. So instead of dodging, Sakumo drew out the short sword on his back to resist, but the moment his sword was about to block the blade coming at him, the blade flashed with electricity. The harsh sound and the dazzling electric current are like his Chidori blades. Zizi Tilda. After a sharp noise, the knife stopped on Sakumo's neck, and Sakumo could even feel the jumping lightning current on his neck. So fast. Orochimaru exclaimed in shock witnessing it. No, my speed is not even as good as Sakumo's performance in illusory domain. Hatake Sagaki said as he retracted his weapon, and continued. 
the more you utilize your sword, the more flaws you have. So all you need is a single deadly sword attack that can end your opponent without them seeing your flaw. Orochimaru froze for a moment from hearing it, then carefully recalled Sakumo's sword play and found that it was definitely like what he said. Hatake Sageki sword speed is not fast, he just used the Chidori blade to change the speed of the sword when the other side thought it could be blocked. Quick, ruthless, and accurate. He has a new understanding of these three characters. Yes. Sakumo said with a new insight. His final quick and slow attack seemed to suppress Orochimaru's attack, but it actually placed too much burden on his hand. And fighting like that, in reality, is impossible for him. As expected of the Hatake clan patriarch, his knowledge about the swords is really deep. Moonlight thought in his mind. After listening to what Hatake Sagaki explained, Moonlight Night Dance feels that his understanding of the sword reaches a new realm from those words alone. The next day, I will teach you how to fight correctly one by one according to today's performance, especially when fighting the Sand Shiner Bee. Hatake said. A week later is the start of the tune in exam, so for this week, a plan on how to train them was already drafted on his mind. But the problem was only Jiraiya since he really has no good solutions for his training. After the battle, he didn't think that Jiraiya was really an innate talent. On the contrary, he was very optimistic about Jiraiya's wisdom and determination in the battle. But his style is too jumpy and Hatake Sagaki can't think of a way for him to train him for a while. Jiraiya is very clever and seeing how Sagaki kept looking at him, he actively started to talk, then I will go back to Mount Myobaku to train. Hatake Sagaki was about to respond and agreed to it since it's the best choice he can think of, but before he could start, a lazy voice sounded in the room. No. I thought of some training that is more suitable for you, starting tomorrow you will train with me. Akaban lethargically said, he just recovered from the use of the Genjutsu earlier, so when he heard what Jiraiya said, he then took the initiative to stop the task that was going to befall his other teammates. Ha! Huh. Tsunad stared wide-eyed at him, obviously. She didn't believe that such a lazy person would take the initiative to stop and take the initiative to train someone. This, will delay your training. Jiraiya said, feeling a bit embarrassed. Mount Myobaku is a good place to train, but the ninjutsu of the toads are just that unique. He has mastered everything he can master, but it's impossible to master their ninjutsu within a day or week. So although he said that, he was happy seeing that he won't be alone again when he trains. No. Akaban shook his head since he didn't plan to train. Okay, you can train separately. Hatake Sagaki said as he saw that, and then he got up and walked out of the room. Except for Jiraiya and Akaban, all the others kept up with him and followed to find a venue for training. We just need to train inside the house. Akaban said as he lay down and then scribbled on a piece of paper after taking out his pen. Soon, the picture was finished as he threw this piece of paper to Jiraiya. Jiraiya took it and looked at it carefully. On the paper is a densely packed sphere with various spikes. Upon closer inspection, it seems that there is a person in the middle. What is this? It's a jutsu called Needle Jizo, do you know a hedgehog? Akaban replied. Yes, since I caught it in the past. Jiraiya nodded, then became thoughtful. In this picture, isn't the protected ninja like a hedgehog? Your hair volume is good, this kind of hair-related ninjutsu is more suitable for you. Akaban said seriously. This technique needs to be trained in an early stage, and it needs for the practitioner to be bald in the start for a while. 
and only Jiraiya who has a lot of hair that is growing fast can do it without concern in this regard. It's really a very good technique, is there anything else? Jiraiya said excitedly, the moment he heard Akaban describing the ninjutsu, he already felt that it was suitable for him. You can practice this first. I will only give you only one day or two so, so you should hurry up. Needle Jizo is a defense against ninjutsu. It will be useful in the next Chunin exams. If Jiraiya can master it, he can have a trump card in the exam. This kind of technique, I would master it right away. Jiraiya said excitedly, and he immediately went to study the drawings. Akaban on the other hand lay down on the bed, ready to sleep peacefully. Jiraiya started to practice Needle Jizo. This ninjutsu itself is his future creation, so he was very appreciative of him. After listening to it, his thoughts diverged and he had a variety of new ideas. He has a full set of ideas for the usage of Needle Jizo, coupled with the knowledge learned from Mount Myobaku, it is not difficult to create this ninjutsu. This is what Jiraiya imagined but the reality is not the same as his imagination. His hair is either too hard to wrap around, or too soft with no effect. So studying the jutsu for a whole day made his hair grow long due to the chakra he was imbuing on it, but the ninjutsu is still in the state of the semi-finished product. One afternoon, Akaban slept peacefully. After all, he can't help much when developing ninjutsu. The idea of early stage needs to be developed by Jiraiya himself. So he was not busy until the second day. Because Jiraiya's needle jizo is quite mature, it only needs some adjustments in detail. At this time, Akaban's role comes. For Jiraiya to work hard on his own, these fine tunings alone may take a long time. For example, the Chidori. Without Sharingan is an incomplete ninjutsu, but as long as it is slightly adjusted and changed into something that can be incorporated with the user will also become a perfect ninjutsu. The details of ninjutsu often require some special ideas and higher level insights and knowledge. And Akaban was more advanced in his thinking on these areas. In the afternoon of the second day, the needle jizo is completed. At the same time, the tune-in exam is also in sight. You better take seriously the tune-in exams. When he got close to Akaban's side, Hatake Sagaki reminded him especially. Since based on what he knows about Akaban, this guy only took the exam because of his teammates, he most likely wanted to laze, and then fool around. Really Uncle Sagaki, why do you remind me of that? It's a tune-in exam so of course, I will take it seriously. Akaban answered while holding his head from having a headache, and thought, why are people doubting me so much? As the son of Sagaki and a teammate of Akaban, Sakumo sincerely admires Akaban. To make his father nag him like this, in the whole Konoha he is the only one who can do it. Is that so? Hatake Sagaki said lightly while glancing at him, clearly not trusting his words, and walked to the location where the first stage exam will be held. Seeing it, somehow Akaban suddenly felt a bad feeling. At this time, outside the examination room, there are already many ninjas from other ninja villages, waiting for the first stage theory test to officially begin. Hatake Sagaki looked around for a moment and then the corner of his mouth raised a little and sneered. Seeing this scene, the bad feeling in Akaban's heart was getting stronger and stronger. And in the next second, Hatake Sagaki's voice echoed in the room and the bad feeling Akaban got really came true. Akaban, these opponents are too simple for you, just take the test as you like. In an instant, the rowdy place instantly became silent and only the sound of the sand was heard in everyone's ear. After saying that, Hatake Sagaki left the room, leaving everyone. 
sure enough. Akaban said as he massaged his forehead while cursing. The effect of this sentence is simply comparable with everyone here is rubbish. As for the effect. All the ninjas on the scene looked over, including the two Chunin guarding the gate of the hidden sand village with rage clearly seen in their eyes. Poor Jenin, being cheated by his own Jonin. Everyone glanced at him fiercely and if a look can kill, maybe Akaban already died a million times. But none of them challenged him in person. However, not all of them hate him because someone remembered his name and exclaimed Hey, Akaban, isn't that the author of One Piece? One Piece, is that the exaggerated? Stupid comic. The ninja who came from Yugakyo village mocked and then continued what devil fruit, pirate, it's clear that the author is also a fool. TL forward slash N, Yugakyo means village hidden in hot water. Yugakyo is located on the sea, so he is very familiar with the sea. One Piece The pirates are simply wandering samurai and rogue ninja. And who will quit being a ninja and become a leader of the rogue ninja and sail the sea? So he knew that all of it was the author's idiocy for not seeing the world. Tsunad who heard it clenched her fist, and planned to beat the one who said that and put the word theory on his skull. Akaban grabbed her hand, and then took a look at Jenin who came from the Yugakyo then indifferently said, being narrow-minded makes it really too hard to understand the meaning of a story, ha. Huh? You. Enough Yamada. Beside him, another companion from the Yugakyo reached out and held him. Enough what? The people of Konoha are so provocative. You can't do it, one piece is just a story. Why are you so provocative? Yamada's companion said disgruntled. You guys. That's why you are so weak. Humph Tilda. Yamada said as he flung away the hand holding him with an ugly face. After he left, his two teammates walked over to apologize. I'm sorry, he is not like this normally, we apologize to you. Yes, it's nothing. Akaban smiled since he didn't at all care too much about it. On the contrary, this drama exposed the team's disharmony. At first, Akaban was a little puzzled why they behaved like this apologizing to him, but after a moment of thinking and recalling what he read from a book, he finally understood. Yugak your village is different from other small ninja villages. They have always liked the peace and are not willing to participate in disputes, so their village is also called the village that forgets war. But at the same time, they have also produced different kinds of people, such as Haydn who also came from Yugakyo village. And this Yamada is really similar to Haydn which made him frown since he knows it's not a coincidence. With Akaban's personality. He really didn't want to bother paying attention to the internal affairs of the Yugakyo village. But this Yamada cast his anger on him, so if he saw him on the exam, he would teach him a good lesson for sure. It turns out that many people are really unhappy with Akaban, and they have the idea of teaching him a lesson, but due to Yamada, everyone's attention was suddenly attracted to the one piece they were arguing about. In the world of Naruto where entertainment is very poor, even if the plot of the story was not true, it's still things that they can enjoy. After Akaban and Yamada quarreled, many ninjas who had a friendship with Konoha immediately moved toward them. For example, the Kuzugakyo ninja village. The first sentence they said was when will the comic be sold to them? And there were even some ninjas from other clans who wanted to do business with Akaban. In short, the comic quickly becomes a hot topic even overlooking their anger at Akaban. Shinyai and the rest who were watching from behind were stunned, each of them looked dull seeing this, and then glanced at each other and said in a low voice, Lord Sagaki should not have thought of it tuning like this right. Who knows? Sakumo who was indifferent like Orochimaru, couldn't help laughing. 
Indeed. His father wanted to give Akaban everyone hatred so that Akaban couldn't avoid the tune in exams. Unexpectedly, his goal backfired on him. Instead of hatred towards him, Akaban even got more fans due to it and some even wanted to send business to his door. What an unexpected result, and here I was ready to fight. Murasaki said as he put away the kunai on his hand, and sighed melancholy. They are the same age, but the gap is too big. A long time later, Akaban dealt with all of it and sent away those who wanted to establish diplomatic relations and cooperation. What do they want to do? Tsunad asked since she is very curious. Just now, she actually wanted to go up and help, but thinking about the scene where people were swarming at him, she retreated promptly since she didn't want to be in his position. They want to monopolize the business. Akaban answered as he rubbed his ears. Since as soon as a bunch of people gathers beside him, his ears keep rumbling from their voice. The comic. Tsunad was taken aback for a moment, then angrily exclaimed, They really have a thick skin. Sakumo and the others look at Tsunad, and their expression is very strange and the only question in their head was. If the author Akaban didn't say much, why are you so angry? And of course, they didn't dare to utter it to her face since they still want to participate in the exam. Don't worry about it, my clansman will be the one who will talk about business to them, not me so why bother, just ignore them. Akaban said as he shook his head. Anyway, no matter what the law or whatever, as long as the manga is sent out, there are points to get, so why bother? Of course. There is always bargaining in business, but these things have nothing to do with him. And he just responded to other people, in the same way, asking them to come to Konoha, sit down and talk about it there. Dash. At this time, there was a sound of metal crashing in the distance and a voice echoed in the room. The first stage exam is about to begin. Everyone will enter the exam room according to your serial number. Hearing it, two tune in that were guarding the exam room step aside after opening the door, letting everyone enter the exam room. The examination room in Hidden Sand Village is different from the Konoha examination room from the anime he watched in his previous life. Their internal structure is very simple, obviously, it was built temporarily not at all too well decorated. Akaban looked around, then walked to the door to find his serial number. First row, number three, dot. He was taken aback for a moment, then looked around again. Following him, he found that everyone was sitting very scattered, and Orochimaru and Sakumo were in the most conspicuous positions. If they want to cheat, they will be spotted at a glance. Hidden Sand Village is doing little tricks. Akaban thought for a while, and then couldn't help but sneer. This kind of method will only work for Jiraiya and is definitely useless on Orochimaru who was a genius and especially on him who was a Genjutsu user. After thinking about it, Akaban sat on his seat with a confident expression on his face. Not long after, a silhouette walked in from outside the door. This was a middle-aged man who looked quite old, but his eyes were bright and piercing, and he didn't look too annoying. A hidden sand village Jonin. Although he looks different from his future self who was an old man, Akaban guesses that he is likely to be Ibizo. My name is Ibizo, and I am the inspector for the first test of the Chunin exam. The middle-aged man said as he sat down and slowly... After waiting for a few seconds, while observing all the participants at the same time, he indifferently said, Now I announce the rules of the exam. The first stage exam is a written assessment, with a total of 10 questions. Individuals with a score of less than 5 will be disqualified, and those who cheat will also be disqualified. 
a team with a total score of less than 18 points cannot advance to the next round. A simple rule. Akaban muttered for a moment. Under this rule, I am afraid it is not the psychological warfare of Ibuki, but the real exam. However, if you are not caught, cheating is also allowed. Give them the paper. After Abizo finished speaking, he signaled to those Chunin who nodded and started giving the questionnaire one by one. It didn't take long for everyone in the examination room to get questionnaires on their hand. After getting the questionnaire in his hand, Akaban glanced at it. The above topic was. During the war, you got the following note. Please solve the hidden information in the note and filter out the useful information. Kunai throws in the form of the following pictures. Although it is a written examination, it is basically a topic drawn up by the actual combat group of Sand Ninja. After all, the war has just ended so giving this kind of question is to be expected. Akaban sighed in his heart. This kind of topic theory combined with how it works on reality is actually much more difficult than the theoretical test of simple calculation and recitation. However, he just glanced at it, as for the answer. Well, he didn't know any answer to the question. And since he is lazy, he didn't bother thinking about how to solve the question. As for Orochimaru, the moment he got his questionnaire, he was already writing an answer on it the moment he took the pen on the table. That's what we call genius Akaban thought. So noticing how confident Orochimaru is, Akaban is relieved. He doesn't even bother to collect information and observe other participants with tune in in his surroundings. Anyway, there is an intellectual in his group, so why bother looking? So he got down and prepared to take a nap. Ibizo, who was the inspector of the exam, was sitting in a chair with his arm crossed. All the participants looked at him since he looked like he was sleeping, but... Not long after, his voice resounded in the classroom that surprised all the participants, you on the third row, seat four. You are disqualified. What? The one who was called was a ninja from the hidden waterfall village. The moment his number was called, he looked up in a daze, and couldn't believe it. Even if I turn a blind eye, I can still see you turning and looking around like a hen looking for food. Ibizo sighed and said, get out. As one of their teammates was out, the other two teammates that were left behind became desperate instantly. Although it is not the team's joint responsibility this time, still losing a partner is a huge toll on them since the two of them must score 18 points or more in the test to advance. And to receive the passing score, they need 9 points or a perfect score to do it which is next to impossible. Dying. Not only them, but the rest of the exam candidates in the examination room are also very tight. This middle-aged man didn't seem to pay attention to the exam room at all, but his eyes were so good that even a fly couldn't escape from him. As one person was out, the rest even became more vigilant. However, many of these questions are in the category that Chunin can answer. And they are only genin so only a few of them can answer it, and the rest have no choice but to cheat if they want to advance to the next phase of the exam. But here comes the problem. How far should they do it without being discovered? They all know that this exam is not only about information collection ability, but also how concealed their ninjutsu is when gathering intelligence. On the battlefield, the ninja who doesn't understand how important concealment is are all dead. Ibizo supervised the four directions without looking, and with the cooperation of the tune-in inside the room, they caught dozens of cheating participants. However, he has always paid attention to Akaban who is in the first row. With his rank and position in the Sand Village, Ibizo knows who has what abilities. 
This kid named Akaban doesn't seem to have much ability, but he is actually the Kekii Genkai user of the Kyorama clan, and his ability should not be underestimated. And he has been paying attention to him since the start of the exam. And seeing how he still hadn't written an answer since the start, Ibizo suddenly felt it was strange since half of the time already passed and he was still sleeping. Still not answering. When he was pondering about it, he quickly noticed that Akaban's hands under the table moved. Has it started? Ibizo thought as he concentrated his full attention on Akaban. However, Akaban didn't open his eyes, it seemed that he just moved his hand due to his terrible sleeping posture. But Ibizo didn't think like that and thought, it's not right, something is wrong these guys. Ibizo, who was deeply thinking about it, was once again surprised to find that all of the participants from the Konoha were sleeping on their desk like Akaban. Include Orochimaru. Is it a coincidence? No. Too many coincidences are no coincidences anymore. Ibizo has been responsible for information work for many years, and this kind of experience was imprinted on his bones. He glanced at Akaban recalling the scene earlier where the other side of his hand was put away, and it was also the moment the rest fell asleep as if it was a cue. A genjutsu. Ibizo exclaimed in his mind and thought and he did it without hiding at all. Thinking about it made him sigh in his heart. With this large scale of genjutsu, if they want to cheat openly, he can't do anything about it since he is not a genjutsu practitioner who can easily discern it. This kid is more terrifying than what the information dictates and is also a very dangerous enemy. Thinking of this, Ibizo took a deep breath. To prevent Akaban from passing into the third round, the Hidden Sand Village needs to invest a lot of manpower to deter him. But if a large number of people are replaced, it is not worth the gain. What's more, these kids' teammates are also not weak. When Ibizo got the information, he immediately began to wonder how to arrange the third round of the war. Of course. He did not forget to continue to observe and collect information. This test forced many people's abilities to be used, and the information about their abilities is enough to give them the Sand Ninja Village an advantage in the next battle. It didn't take long for the people of Konoha to wake up. Ibizo paid close attention to them silently. And as he expected, the first thing they did after waking up was to pick up their pens and answer questions. If in the first half of the time they were idling in the classroom since they didn't know the answer like Akaban, now all of them were focused on answering the questionnaire. Others can't see it, but for Abizo who is at the front, it's not difficult for him to read Akaban's paper. However, this kid only did a few questions and then put down the pen, not answering all of them. Ibizo glanced at it and saw exactly five questions were answered. According to his rules, everyone must score more than five points to qualify, and those who have less than five points are disqualified. In other words, this kid was confident that all his answers were correct. As he was thinking of it, Ibizo's face was not so good, so he glanced around, and finally fixed his eyes on Orochimaru. Of the nine people who awoke, only Orochimaru didn't do anything. That means the source of the answer is him. And Ibizo is not surprised about it. The third Hokage has the nickname of Ninja Court Academician. And as the third Hokage discipline, he is also a famous genius character of Konoha. So it is not surprising that he has this kind of ability. But in the final analysis for him, the kid from the Kyorama clan is the incredible one. Looking at Akaban who was lying down to sleep, Ibizo felt very angry, but there was nothing he could do. After all, according to the correction rate of Orochimaru's test papers, these people may get high marks or even full marks. 
Even if Akaban has only five points, his two teammates have at least eight points or more. And their total score will be more than 20 points, basically locking the qualification for them to advance to the next level of the exam. Konoha, these people are really amazing. Ibizo sighed in his heart, and at the same time feel how lucky they were. Eleven. Fortunately, the second Kaiskij of Hidden Sand Village is still alive, coupled with Kaiskij's research and improvement of puppet master Jutsu and magnet style techniques, the future of Hidden Sand Village is also smooth. After a while, a sound of the metal collision came from outside. Ibizo got up and shouted, OK, the exam is over. Um, it's over. Akaban mumbled as he raised his head with sleepy eyes. Collect them. Ibizo ignored him and waved his hand to signal the rest of Chunin to collect all the questionnaires. In the second half of the exam, poor cheating skills rarely appear, so fewer people cheat out and get disqualified. However, because some of the other ninja teammates were disqualified, there are still many teams unable to advance. Ibizo roughly calculates that at least half of the teams will not be able to qualify for the second round. And if he adds the scores, there will be more people unable to advance. And the amount is almost the same. The first stage was pretty simple. Jiraiya said as he got up from his seat with a relaxed expression on his face. Simple. If it were not for banning a fight here, this sentence alone would be Jiraiya's demise in the hands of other ninjas who got disqualified. Jiraiya, don't be so shameless, and go outside to gather. Tsunad said as she glared at him. Okay. Jiraiya who heard the tigress immediately fled from her without looking back. Akaban, who was still on his desk, glanced at his back and saw most of the people had already left, so he slowly got up and followed the crowd. Outside, Sakumo and Murasaki waited at the door ahead. And as soon as they saw him coming out, they nodded at each other and dragged him out from the end of the crowd. What are you doing? Akaban was in a daze and didn't understand what they wanted to do. You only wrote five questions. Yes, since writing more won't give us extra points on the next exam. Akaban replied like it's only normal. Tune-in exams are tested in different phases, and the scores from the previous round will not accumulate to the second round. So it is wasteful to write one more answer when you already know you pass, right? Forget it, let's wait for the result. Sakumo didn't know what to say after hearing such a straightforward answer. And ended the talk, since further talk will only be useless. The three of them gather and rush to meet the others when they meet them. And unlike the melancholy and worries of the other teams, the three teams from Konoha are very relaxed. Orochimaru never wrote a wrong answer when it came to theoretical questions when they were in the academy, so if he claimed he is second in terms of theoretical knowledge, then no one in the same grade will claim first. What's more, the answer they wrote was the result of discussion when they were in Akaban illusory domain. So worrying about their results was only an idiot would do. After waiting a few minutes, a beautiful silhouette came out from the first examination room. She looked at everyone, then took out a list and posted it to the door, and said indifferently, the results of the first stage exam have been out. And a total of 81 ninjas have passed. And I am the head examiner Kiyo of the second stage exam, and the people on the list will go to the second exam room with me. Akaban hearing it was surprised, and thought, that Granny Kiyo. I have heard of her, she is a very famous female Jonin. Tsunad said excitedly. The environment in the land of wind is very harsh, but the wind and sand didn't leave a deep mark on her face, since she still looks young and beautiful. However, when Kiyo's name is mentioned, 
Akaban always remembers the old image of a granny who was pretending to be dead. Perhaps she heard it since Kyo looked in their direction. And after discovering that the person who started to talk was a girl, she smiled slightly at Psyunad, and then turned and walked forward. It's great, I will also become a ninja like her in the future, no, I want to surpass her and become the first female hawkage. Psyunad solemnly vowed while clenching her fist. Seeing this scene, Akaban doesn't know how to respond. Just looking at it now, who would have thought that in the future, the two would become opponents that would kill each other? Fate. I just went to see it, and all of us passed. Murasaki said as he ran back and happily, gave everyone a letter. Why are you so happy, it's so simple, isn't it normal to have all passed? Jiraiya said as he looked at him contemptuously. The rest smiled when they heard it, obviously with the use of the illusory domain as a cheat, isn't it normal to pass it? Hearing it, Murasaki rubbed his head in embarrassment and glared fiercely at Akaban. If this guy not only wrote five answers, would he be so worried and squeeze in the crowd worriedly? Cough cough. Let's go to the second examination room first, since if we go early we can also rest. Akaban said as he broke the embarrassment and stiffly changed the subject. Let's go. Orochimaru lightly walked to the front and led the way, without saying much. The entire group followed Kiyo from the village to the outside without noise. After a long journey, everyone came to a valley, and through the valley, they could see an endless desert. The mouth or the entrance of the valley was surrounded by iron fences and was guarded by a ninja, which was obviously for inspection. It doesn't look right. Sakumo whispered as he frowned. This place is the previous battlefield, at that time when the Hidden Stone Village wanted to siege the Sand Village, many ninjas were poisoned to death in this desert. Orochimaru whispered. You know this as well? Akaban asked in surprise. Well, that was the matter of the First China Bee World War. Orochimaru was going to explain in detail, but then Kiyo looked over, so he stopped. After that, Kiyo came over. Orochimaru bowed slightly and was about to apologize, but... Your name is Orochimaru. My younger brother is right. You are indeed very knowledgeable. Kiyo said with a smile. You flatter me. Orochimaru replied with a calm expression. At this time, Kiyo glanced at Sakumo next to him, and suddenly her face became unpleasant when she saw his face. Since seeing Sakumo's face, she would think of Hatake Sagaki. That guy has killed a lot of sand ninja. She turned her head and looked towards the desert and said, This desert not only buried Stone Ninja, but also the Ninja of Konoha and our own Ninja of Hidden Sand Village. Yes, that's why Ninja World needs peace. Jiraiya said emotionally. HMPH, little kid, don't be too naive, peace can't be so easy. Kiyo sneered, and after taking a few steps towards the canyon, she turned around and glanced at the 81 people who followed her. Jiraiya really wants to complain, but because of the other side's strength, he decisively admits it. This person called Orochimaru is right. This is the battlefield before and there are many remaining poisons and undetonated detonators, traps, etc. Kiyo indifferently said and after looking for a while she continued. After entering, it doesn't matter whether you die or live since it's too late to quit. Hearing it, the place became silent with only the sand and wind being heard. And no one answered it, nor asked a question. The war has only ended more than two years ago, and all genins here have experienced war indirectly. So just a simple word and threat cannot make them retreat. Seeing it Kiyo coldly smiled and took out a stack of paper, since you don't want to quit, just sign it. 
the Chunin at the back took it and distributed them one by one. Akaban signed his name without pressure and then handed the paper back to the Chunin. After everyone had signed their names, Kiyo continued, We have fenced the examination room with iron nets. A total of 40 entrances have been set up. Your mission is very simple. Go in and find something like this scroll with the coordinates, and then go to the position we requested correctly. After she finished speaking, she took out a scroll and spread it out. There are a bunch of secret signs on the scroll, and the secret sign should be the coordinate position. I will repeat it again, who wants to quit while it's still early? Kiyo said with a smile. Akaban and other people glance at each other, and after nodding at each other, everyone takes their eyes away with tacit understanding. You are all so stupid that you are not afraid of death, so the invigilators, let them draw numbers on a group basis, and then go to the corresponding entrances. Entry is allowed after 30 minutes. Kiyos announced in a cold tone. Yes. 40 entrances are enough to distribute all groups to each place. And Akaban is assigned to gate 35 with his team. This exam is still about information gathering. Since I feel that scroll may be fake. She also didn't say that we can't grab it. On the way, Murasaki and Sakumo whispered to each other. Akaban sat on the ground, took a look at them, and then said, you two go in later, and we'll search for it. How about you? Sakumo slightly frowned hearing it and asked. I'll grab someone else's, and take a few more sets of scrolls. Akaban replied. The coordinates of the scroll can be true or false, but Hidden Sand Village is not crazy enough to put many false coordinates as true coordinates. The one with the highest rate of comparison must be the real coordinate scroll is what he guess. Of course. In addition to this reason, there are other reasons, and it is not convenient to talk to them. If you want to be alone, I don't object it, but you must be careful. Murasaki said as he does not doubt him, but is still very worried about him. If we fail, we will come back but if something goes wrong. Murasaki said without finishing his statement, but the meaning is clear. Do you still worry despite knowing my ability? As teammates, Murasaki and Sakumo believe in Akaban's ability. But being in the desert, the danger of being alone is too high. However, the advantage of the Kyorama clan Genjutsu lies in its weird and unstoppable ability. As long as there is no direct confrontation, Akaban is almost invincible like a fish in the pond, and besides, it's not only him who will do it. Orochimaru, they are at gate number 18, well, it should be in this position. Leaving the team, Akaban observes his surroundings first before heading towards Orochimaru's team's location while using transformation to change his appearance but it didn't take him long before he stopped as he sensed someone ahead. Sneaking around, he saw a familiar team he didn't expect to see. Yamada, don't be like this, we just need to find it, not steal. It's because you are too weak, that's why you think like that. If you don't have the courage to fight, don't follow me anymore. I alone can do it, weakling. Seeing them having a dispute with each other, Akaban knows that this team won't last long before they get eliminated. Yamada. Forget it, let him go. Yamada's teammates seem very helpless. In terms of fighting strength, Yugakyo Ninja does not have an advantage at all. And they know very well that they are a small ninja village. So what the two have planned was... Find the scroll discreetly or wait for the exam to finish if they can't find any to save their lives. However, there are always people from the same village who are unwilling to do it and have other plans, such as Yamada who wants to steal other team's scrolls. 
Akaban who saw all this put the plan he had to meet Orochimaru at the back of his head. And followed Yamada who left his team behind silently without being noticed. Although it's his second time meeting him, Akaban thinks Yamada is very suspicious, and his suspicion becomes more evident when he sees it earlier since it looks like Yamada is deliberately finding faults in his teammates just to withdraw from his team. In this case, there must be some secrets he is hiding from his team. So Akaban quietly follows him, and with his mastery that he got from the system, Yamada can't sense him at all. After a long walk, Yamada suddenly stopped. He stood on the sand dunes while shutting his eyes and muttered to himself. Staying in this stupid and rotten village made it hard for me to offer sacrifice. Now is the time. When he opened his eyes after mumbling that, a crazy and evil smile appeared on his face with his aura also changing. Akaban who was watching from the distance was startled when he sensed the sudden change in his aura. Although he didn't see his expression, he knew he hit a jackpot following Yamada. It seems this bastard is not normal. And from what I can sense, there seems to be a sand ninja planning to ambush him over there. Let's watch what's going to happen first. Akaban mumbled as he hid behind the sandstone in the distance watching Yamada's every move. For the terrain of the desert, Sand Ninja knows it better than other ninjas. The ninja who was waiting to ambush his enemy had his whole body buried in the sand, with his only hands that were exposed. Following his finger movement, a puppet quietly approached Yamada under the sand. With the Sand Ninja's chakra thread manipulation, the puppet was getting closer and closer, and after getting a close distance to the target. Su. With a sound, the puppet ejects a poisonous arrow from his mouth after coming out from the sand, which instantly shoots through Yamada's chest. Although it missed the heart, it was enough to cause heavy injury. Seeing that it hit the target, the sand ninja jumped up from the sand dunes and threw a shuriken from a distance as a finishing blow to its enemy. Show tilde show tilde. However, in the next second, Yamada who was about to be hit by the shuriken suddenly turned around and directly grabbed the shuriken with his bare hands. What? The sand ninja was shocked seeing it, and thought isn't this guy afraid of pain? But his shock was only for a moment, and immediately planned to retreat, since he knew that it's impossible to win. But before he could execute his plan, Yamada, who reacted faster, kicked the ground and quickly jumped in front of the sand ninja with his hand raised. Bang! Cough Tilda. With a punch directed to his face, the sand ninja coughed from pain and still struggled to run. But with Yamada directly stabbing a kunai on his leg, it made his escape become impossible. Ha 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 ha, dedicate yourself to Lord Jashin. Yamada shouted as he laughed wildly while taking the kunai from the sand ninja leg. He did not directly kill the ninja, but first abolished its limbs and tortured it one by one. With Yamada laughing wildly while still torturing the sand ninja while shouting Lord Jashin. A cult. Akaban is shocked witnessing it with his own eyes since he didn't expect Yamada to be a cult like Haydn from the story. After observing Yamada carefully, he found that the wound he received from the puppet was recovering quickly while his body was covered with a weird mantra swirling on it. What is the principle of this evil force? Akaban didn't understand it a bit. Haydn who was also a cult will not die even if his whole body is split into pieces. But this guy doesn't look that strong like Haydn but judging from the fact that Sand Ninja was decapitated with a single punch, the punch might be surprisingly strong. Forget it, let's catch him first. Akaban, who has so many questions didn't continue thinking about it and took out the drawing board and started to work. To deal with this kind of abnormal ninja, 
ordinary Genjutsu is estimated to be useless, so after thinking about what to use, he came up and directly used the Kyorama clan's ability. When his chakra is poured, the ink will automatically emerge from the chakra pen. And as the image was drawn out, the Genjutsu was launched. Yamada, who was laughing maniacally while still torturing the barely alive sand ninja, stopped his movement when he felt something was wrong. En. What's the situation? The moment he fell into the illusion, Yamada immediately felt something was wrong. It's not that he is so strong that he can sense Akaban's illusory domain immediately, but it's because of how he suddenly can't feel the power of Jashin coming onto his body. His spiritual energy is not too high. Akaban mumbled as he felt no resistance when he cast it on Yamada. And after thinking about it for a while, he finally understood Yamada's situation. And he deduced that Yamada having a strong body was thanks to Jashin. This kind of body strengthening is estimated to be quite different from Haydn's immortal body. But he did not kill Yamada directly since the moment he saw its recovery ability earlier, he suddenly thought of Orochimaru. Since Orochimaru should be very interested in such excellent experimental subjects. After thinking about it, he just maintained the illusory domain. Anyway, the other side's spiritual energy is not high and his chakra consumption is very little due to having Uzumaki physique, and it does not take much effort to maintain it. So the question was how to call Orochimaru. But it seems he didn't need to think about it when he sensed a familiar aura coming in his direction. After a few seconds, a silhouette landed on the scene. Orochimaru who arrived at the scene was surprised when he saw Akaban. He didn't know that Akaban was here since he rushed over after only smelling the strong smell of blood. And as a result, he saw a sand ninja corpse that was clearly tortured before his death, and also a familiar looking ninja lying on the ground in a coma with Akaban hiding in a distance. This ninja. If I remember correctly. He should be a ninja from Yugakyo named Yamada, right? Then what happened to him? Orochimaru asked and was a little bit confused. He then approached the body and found that Yamada chakra was still flowing in his veins. This situation is obviously not a coma. Are you the one who did it? After looking in Akaban direction, he couldn't help but ask. Not me. Orochimaru glanced at him and didn't quite understand the meaning of his answer. He didn't think much about it, and once again focused on Yamada. After studying his body for a long time, he suspiciously said, This guy is a bit weird. There is a chakra in his body that does not belong to him. If I take that chakra from his body, it is estimated that his strength will become several times weaker. If you're asking me how then maybe it's because he performs some kind of ritual Akaban answered. After saying that, Akaban described what he saw from before. And Orochimaru's eyes lit up when he heard it like a child receiving his new toy, taking out his kunai, he circled Yamada's body while poking it with it multiple times. In the beginning, Yamada's body will recover quickly after being stabbed. But. Later on, his recovery speed was not as fast like before. At the same time, Yamada's body that was covered with some kind of mantra was also rapidly weakening. It seems to be related to his chakra. Orochimaru said excitedly. Um, I also think so, but first let's move to a different location first, since there is another corpse here. Akaban who unconsciously participated in the experiment Orochimaru did for the first time, was not comfortable witnessing the state of a scientific madman. But first, you should let him go first so I can test him. Orochimaru said. So cruel. Akaban couldn't help but sympathize with Yamada. Being in Orochimaru's hands, 
will definitely not be that good for his life. His chakra does not belong to him. And according to your description, he probably obtains it from a weird torture ceremony, but after repeated injuries earlier, this chakra is almost exhausted, so I want to know how it works. Orochimaru explained excitedly. For Akaban, this is not difficult. Anyway, this guy didn't have that much spiritual energy so it's easy for him to put him back into the illusion. Besides, he is also very curious like Orochimaru. If their immortality is maintained by Chakra, Haydn would have died hundreds of times, so Yamada's situation is obviously different from Haydn's. After that, the two quietly left the scene and hid, while the genjutsu on Yamada was lifted. Yamada, who awakened from his sleep, froze for a long time and didn't move from his position. I was definitely hit by genjutsu just now, but... Thinking about it, he looked around at his surroundings and found nothing amiss that made him confused even more. And when he was about to get up, he saw a slight wound on his body. And seeing it, he couldn't help but think of the strange doctor in the illusory domain who was bisecting him with a knife. What the hell is going on? Yamada shouted as he was at loss, and it took him a long time to get up and leave the scene while still in a daze. On the other side, Akaban and Orochimaru, who are behind, are not in a hurry to capture Yamada so the two of them shadowed Yamada who was still clueless. And after following Yamada who was still in a daze, Akaban couldn't help but ask. Before, when we were in the illusory domain you asked me to leave my team. What's it about? Orochimaru hearing it answered with a serious expression. I want to bring other ninja villages secret jutsu and kekii genkai and plan to research them. And I will also plan to find some people from small villages to organize some influence, so I hope you can cooperate with me. Akaban hearing it asked a little confused cooperation. Since if it's all about his research, he didn't need his cooperation right. Yes. I know you want to promote your comic to other villages. So when I develop some influence outside, I will help you smuggle and promote it. Orochimaru is really smart and sharp. Akaban thought as he pondered about it, what Orochimaru said was right and since it's for his points and it was not difficult for him. Then let's have a happy cooperation. Yamada is Jashinists but that doesn't mean he is stupid. All the encounters after being hit by Genjutsu just now show that someone just discovered the whole story of his murder. And knowing that he couldn't beat that person, he chose to flee frantically. However, on this point, Orochimaru also considered these very well. So behind Yamada, a snake has been tracking him to ensure that his position coordinates will not be lost. While following, Akaban asked casually, since you've experimented on him, is there any special discovery? Yes, from my discovery the chakra implanted on him was like a heterogeneous chakra, but the details were still unknown. Orochimaru whispered. I see. So it's still on the chakra like I thought. Akaban whispered and secretly pondered. It seems that the cult has some way to go before they can achieve the immortality Haydn has. Since it's impossible to achieve immortality with just a chakra alone even if it's an alien chakra. What are you thinking? Orochimaru also has a lot of thoughts in his mind about Yamada, but when he pays attention to Akaban's expression, he can't help but ask since he knows that this guy is more familiar than he thought about this kind of power. This power must have a price. If the cult could solve the side effects, cultists would have gone everywhere. Akaban answered casually. At this time, he smelled blood again, and after walking a few steps, he saw a blood-red sand dune. And on the top of the sand dune, Three corpses are in sight. 
It will be very troublesome to go on like this. If you want to keep your experimental materials, you'd better stop now. A Kaban frowned. Unfortunately, these three ninjas are from Hidden Sand Village. It looks like it. Orochimaru said as he squatted down observing the corpse, these three ninjas were full of holes, exactly the same as the previous one. Apparently, they also died from the ceremony Yamada did on them. To die in a trap or a normal fight, the Hidden Sand Village can only admit that it was their ninja weakness, but to die tragically like this means that some abnormal identities have been mixed in the examination that will lead to an investigation. And since they didn't want to kill Yamada because he is a valuable experimental subject, the Hidden Sand investigation will lead to them which will be troublesome. So it's time to close the net. The two accelerated their movements and quickly followed the road where Yamada is. With the desert climate, the blood path leading to Yamada is buried by the wind and sand so it's impossible to track him using the blood. However, there is a summoned beast tracking Yamada so it didn't take long for Akaban and Orochimaru to find him. Run, this guy is a lunatic, a monster. Help, save us. Kill him together, otherwise, no one can run away. Wailing and crying for help. That's what Akaban and Orochimaru heard even when they are still far away from Yamada. When they got closer, they saw an amazing scene where Yamada's whole body was covered with a black mantra and was surrounded by seven or eight people, fearlessly attacking Yamada. Witnessing the scene Akaban was taken aback. This Jashin's power is really strong, Yamada who was at the center of the attack didn't budge at all and received all the attack without moving from his position while fighting back. Orochimaru, who was also watching, couldn't help but explain when he saw Yamada's condition. He can't control this kind of ability, you should help them or they will die. It's not like Orochimaru wants to save the ninja who was fighting Yamada when he said that. It was because he is sure that Yamada can't bear the injury of this level, and he can't freely manipulate and restore his body with his ability. So even if he wins, Yamada will not survive in the end. But fighting Yamada in that condition was impossible for Orochimaru so he can only count on Akaban to do it. Although it was Jashin's blessing, it actually felt more like a curse. Akaban mumbled as he took his weapon. The ninjas fighting Yamada are from the waterfall village with three teams in total, but two people are already dead lying on the ground. Now it's time to make a move, or else it's all in vain doing all this experiment. Are you calling for help? Akaban said as he came out from the sand dunes with his appearance changed while walking in their direction. At this moment, Yamada had already lost his mind, so when they saw Akaban, the ninja fighting Yamada immediately cried out at him. Help us, help us. Being exhausted from fighting for a long time, with an opponent who seemed not afraid of injury or death made them perplexed. Of course. These people can still fight, but they plan to plot against their helper. If Akaban goes down and suffers from fighting with Yamada, they will kill Akaban to reap the benefits which is undoubtedly the perfect result for them. Akaban, hearing it smiled kindly, he sat down on a dune and said, I can help you or him, but I can only help those who bid higher. Yamada did not answer and shouted again with a punch directed at the stunned ninja in front of him. Putilda the person who stood in the front was directly beaten to death by a straight punch and fell to the ground. For Lord Jashin. After enthusiastically shouting after killing the ninja, his strength and speed have been greatly increased again. We will give you whatever you want, please help us. The ninja below said in a hurry. If they lose more people here, they will still lose due to it no matter what benefits they have. And nothing is more important than survival. 
Very good. Akaban said as he stood up. He didn't just sit there to look cool while looking at them, he completed his genjutsu as he sat down while casting it to Yamada without the ninja noticing it. So standing up from his position while keeping his tools, Akaban releases an earth-style jutsu and disappears from his position. And in the next second, he appeared under Yamada. Yamada, who is in the illusory domain, did not resist at all and was dragged directly under the sand. Then Akaban got out of the sand. What's the situation? The six surviving ninjas looked at each other in dismay seeing how Akaban easily subdued Yamada. Their buddies lying on the ground also thought about pulling Yamada down, but as a result, with just a stump from Yamada, his body was almost buried from the sand right now. Do you have a scroll? Akaban glanced at them and asked. These three teams seem to have gained a bit, and it is estimated that there will be a scroll on them. Yes, on him. The ninja of Hidden Waterfall Village points to the corpse on the ground. The corpse is also from Waterfall Ninja. It is probably his original captain, but both of his hands are fractured and there are many blood holes on his body, which looks miserable. Go and pick it up and wipe the blood from it. Akaban instructed with a smile and continued, anything else? Our team also has it, but no we don't know if it's true and not. The ninjas from the waterfall village were so frightened that they immediately took out the stuff in their arms and put them on the ground to let Akaban see them all. Akaban picked up the two scrolls and said to his rear, you can start your work. Work. Hearing it. The six of them were puzzled and turned their heads where Akaban was looking and then saw Orochimaru with scars on his face with a bloodthirsty aura that made all of them knelt on the sand with fright. After that, they begged for mercy in unison and said, For forgive you us, H have mm mercy, as long as you let us go, we will agree to any request you H have. Orochimaru didn't pay any attention to them and directly ignored them like they were and go to the side of Yamada, while pulling out a kunai he saw from the soil, and poke Yamada with it. The six ninjas, seeing it become even more desperate and were trembling all over. How ferocious was Yamada before? But meeting these two who were more dangerous than Yamada, made all the plans they have inside their head vanished like a fart since they know that they will die faster if they try to escape. So all they could do was kneel while waiting with their body shaking from the horror they witnessed in front of them. Dash. A few minutes had passed and Yamada finally let out a scream that froze Orochimaru for a moment. What happened? He knew that with Akaban's genjutsu, it would be impossible for this guy to wake up unless he was unconscious. And Yamada didn't have that kind of brain to think of it so he couldn't help but ask. Dead. Akaban glanced at him and said angrily. Yamada is originally an arrow at the end of its flight, so with Orochimaru moving his kunai around like how a child dissects a frog for the first time, how can he not die? It's a pity. Hearing it Orochimaru sighed, not minding Akaban glare at all. He said it's a pity not because of Yamada's life but because with Yamada dying, there is no way to know where the cult space camp is. Otherwise, this strange technique is really worth studying for him. Dash. Although they were talking about someone's life, they made it look like a teen who wants to ask for money from his parents but their parents did not give him a penny and said it's a pity and it made the six ninjas from the small village scared that almost made them wet their pants. A demon in human skin. Is all the six of them thought. After Orochimaru got up, he looked towards the six ninjas kneeling with their bodies trembling, and with a smirk on his face he asked, Do you want to survive? Yes. Yes. 
although the six of them were trembling uncontrollably because of how scary Orochimaru's scar was on his face due to his transformation, they still answered immediately. Akeki e Genkai, you definitely don't have one. So write all the secret jutsu you know from your village if you guys want to live. Orochimaru threw paper and pen while talking. Okay. I will write right away. They didn't dare to resist at all, because they witnessed what Orochimaru do to Yamada which was too scary, and with their poor psychological tolerance. Some of them even peed their pants directly when Orochimaru pointed the kunai on his hand to their face. Akaban just took a glance at them and then lost interest quickly. He knows that Genin doesn't know any strong ninjutsu at all. So what they will write will definitely be the common jutsu from their village that they knew so he didn't bother looking at it at all. Instead, he took out the scroll that still had a strong smell of blood and walked away a few more steps before sitting down on sandstone to inspect it. And after looking at it for a while, he saw Orochimaru saying something to the six ninjas, which made the six of them turn pale. After that, the six ninjas left a tube of blood and fled with all their might. What did you tell them? Akaban asked when Orochimaru approached him after he let the three flee. I told them that Yamada's body is my experiment, and as long as there is blood, I can curse them and drive them into madness. Orochimaru grinned as he spilled the blood of the six ninjas in the sand. Akaban looked at the back of the ninjas scurrying like a chicken and couldn't help but laugh. Those six must be terrified right now. But afterward, he thought for a while and said, it's only this time that we can scare them like that, but when they are used later, they will not necessarily follow. UN Orochimaru did not refute hearing it since that's what he also thought. He and those ninjas are still young and they are of little use now for him. But it's a different story if he gains power and influence in the future since it will be a long term not short. At that time, Orochimaru has the confidence to rely on his strength to let these ninjas obediently and honestly do things for him without fear of the consequence. Since he finished his business, he couldn't help but ask, what about the scroll? The production method for these things is almost the same, so it is impossible to distinguish between the real thing false. A cape said as he tossed the two scrolls over. Sand Ninja's scroll production is not as good as Konoha, but there are some passing standards for it. But although he knew it, he can't tell which is true or false from the technique formula and the code written on it. I see. Then let's find a few more teams to make sure. Orochimaru said as he got up, he then made a hand seal with both hands and then bit his finger summoning many small snakes. Soon, these snakes are gone looking for their target. Akaban sat in the shade under the sandstone, after looking around he said, next we will go separately, I will look for a scroll while also helping you look for someone who has a keki e genkai in my way while you can continue to do your things. Orochimaru nodded his head, and after a few seconds, he took out something from his clothes and handed it to him. The thing he handed was like his small summoned snakes, but it's not since it's his snake clone. If there is a clue you find or danger, I will know it immediately after you wake it up. You don't have to worry, I will be fine even if I encounter danger. Akaban replied as he waved his hand, D glanced at the sleeping snake. After observing it for a while, he raised his head and couldn't help but asked, if I put it in my arms, it won't suddenly wake up and bite me right. Orochimaru froze for a moment upon hearing it, and he then ignored Akaban and turned around and walked in the direction where his summoned beast found a ninja. He obviously didn't hear the story of the farmer and the snake seeing how he ignored him. Although he was ignored, Akaban shrugged his shoulders since he was just joking but this guy is definitely not someone you can joke around since he will just ignore you. 
he carried the sleeping snake and headed in another direction. The main mission of the second exam is to find the position that was on the real scroll, but it didn't mean it was easy with how difficult it is to distinguish the real one from fake. So, if he wants to distinguish the authenticity of the scroll, he can only collect and compare more to be sure. Therefore, the second stage exam originally encouraged fighting and even killing between other teams. There is no fixed road in the desert, so Akaban runs all the way until he slows down when he senses the fluctuations of the chakra around him. And it didn't take him long for him to see a corpse that was about to be buried by wind and sand. And looking at its body color, it should be a poison that brings it to its death. And this ninja is from Sand Village just looking at his clothes. Akaban who was examining the body stood up immediately when he sensed movement around him. Due to his powerful spiritual energy, it makes his sensing ability better than ordinary ninja, and it didn't take long for him to notice some subtle movements. Following the sound that he sensed, the movement became louder and louder after approaching where it came from. Tell us the whereabouts of the scroll and Yamada, otherwise you will have no way to survive. What scroll, we don't have it at all. About Yamada, we too were looking for him for a long time since he left the team and did not go with us. When Akaban reached the place, he didn't expect to see these two again from Yugakyo village. There are not many Yugakyo ninjas participating in Chunin exams. Only the three that passed the first test. And for these two, he still has a good impression when they first met so. After pondering, he cancels. Cue his transformation jutsu, and then takes out his tools. The ink was splattered, and it didn't take long for a picture to be completed. The picture on the drawing board is exactly the scene of Gara using a quicksand waterfall flow. As his chakra was directed to the drawing, the Genjutsu also took its effect at the same time. The two sand ninjas that were controlling their puppets suddenly felt something was strange around them. And when they looked at their surroundings, what they saw terrified them because they didn't know when a tsunami made of sand materialized surrounding them and ready to devour them alive. What's the situation? Ah. The two are just genin. Although they have the strength of the elite genin, they have never seen such ninjutsu. And one of them ran away frantically, while the other one froze for a moment, and then suddenly yelled, This is genjutsu, don't panic idiot. Let's use the method of dispelling it. After saying that, without hesitation, he stuck his kunai in his hand. However, what he didn't expect was the pain coming back at him like he really struck his hand for real. He thought he was leaving the illusory domain, but when he looked up again, he saw the sky full of yellow sand sweeping by didn't disappear. His face that has a relief for the thought of escaping the genjutsu paled like his white cell. And the next second, it crashes on them, covering everything with sands. In reality, the two ninjas from Yugakyo saw the puppet being manipulated by the sand ninja suddenly stagnate then collapsed like its string being cut. And at the same time the puppets hit the ground, a miserable cry came from inside the cave. And they saw the two ninjas walking out while twitching with their bodies in a bad shape like some boulder hit them from above. If they didn't see them walking, they would think it was a corpse walking. This, this. The two ninjas from Yugakyo are also just teens, so when they saw it, they were so scared that their legs were shaking like a vibrator on its maxed level. And when Akaban also showed himself, it didn't take long for them to completely slump on the ground. They recognized Akaban since he was the one Yamada provoked previously. And with him the only one besides the two of them. They know that Akaban was the one who made the two ninjas from the sand like that. I won't kill you, so you don't have to worry. 
I just want you guys to look for the scrolls for me. Akaban said as he approached them, his genjutsu is only effective on the body so the kunai and headband of the two sand ninja are still in good condition with other items on their body. Oh, okay. The two immediately approached the blooded body of the two and started looking for the scroll Akaban was looking for. Although they were scared, they've allowed their fear while turning the blood-stained body of the sand ninjas upside down. Not long after, two scrolls, a few shurikens, and pills were laid out in front of Akaban, while also taking out another one from themselves, that made it up to three scrolls. Akaban didn't shy away and welcome it with open arms, he took the scroll and pills, and then asked, the one named Yamada on your team, what's his situation? Are you looking for Yamada too? They froze for a moment, and then said, Yamada is actually not a bad person, so please don't take it to your heart, he really. Akaban knew they had misunderstood him so he waved his hand and said no. I want to ask why he believes in Jashin, do you know about it? Jashin. The two looked at each other in blank dismay, confusion clearly on their face. Obviously, they did not know. You three are from Yugak your village right, didn't you notice any abnormalities? Akaban felt more and more strange when he saw how they didn't know anything. Aren't these people teammates? As teammates, they didn't even notice the obvious signs of Yamada offering sacrifice. Although the character of Yamada is impatient and aggressive, isn't it too exaggerated to believe in Jashin? One of them said with a paled face. How is his relationship in your village? Akaban continued to ask. Yamada's parents died in the war. He often bullies people from the village. So villagers don't like his character, while adults also all look down on him. However, his Tijutsu is the strongest among Genin in Yugakyo village. One of them said the other added, they didn't dare to conceal anything at all and said anything they knew about Yamada. No wonder that Jashinists are eyeing him. Akaban quickly understood after listening. It's impossible for everyone to advocate peace, and the rules of Yugak your village will make these aggressive people who want revenge go to extremes like the cults. People with this kind of mentality are undoubtedly the best target for Jashin's minion. With Orochimaru's attitude, he definitely wants to find the hideout of the Jashinist cult so maybe he can try his luck on Yugak your village. Your teammates killed a lot of people. So I advise you to give up the exam and go to the Sand Ninjas to clarify this matter. Akaban reminded them, then got up and left. From his trip alone, he got five scrolls in total, two of which point to the same location while the rest of the scroll codes point to different locations. Sakumo and the others must have got some too. So it's time to meet them. Akaban mumbled as he put away the scroll and prepared to meet Sakumo and the others while hunting. As for the two ninjas from Yugak your village, he has said everything that should be said, and what to do next is their own business and has nothing to do with him. Akaban didn't say when he would come back so how can we contact him? Murasaki said as he and Sakumo hid under the rock. And in front of them, were three scrolls that were spread out. Each of these scrolls is different from each other so they didn't know where to start. Let's just wait for him since he will definitely find us. Sakumo said lightly. He understands Akaban better than Murasaki, so he knows that no matter what happens, the thing he promised will be done. Murasaki thought about it for a moment and nodded his head silently. In fact, both of them know that Akaban's departure from the team can't be a superficial reason. Since how can such a lazy person want to go out alone for no reason? The only explanation is that his business is not convenient to say. And with that being the case, 
the two didn't pry anymore and maintain their tacit understanding with each other. But unexpectedly, they didn't need to wait anymore when they heard a familiar lazy voice coming above them, Sakumo still knows me the best, unlike someone, who was worried about this and that, and doesn't trust me at all. And the next second after his voice ended, five scrolls were thrown down to them. Five scrolls, not bad. Murasaki said as he ran over to pick them up, and opened all of them with the other three in their possession. With eight scrolls being put together, they finally find the correct coordinates for the real direction. Unlike their three scrolls that have different coordinates, this time they found three coordinates in the same direction while the other five were in different locations. Needless to say where the destination is. Sakumo picked up the correct scroll, and looked carefully at it then waved his hand and said, let's go. When they were about to move, Akaban's voice halted their movement, by the way, when I was looking for you two, I saw Zack group. Did he take any action? Murasaki asked nervously. Nah, they didn't see me. It's me who saw them fighting the other team and saw Zack manipulating Iron Sand. It should be a brand new ninjutsu since it's my first time seeing it. Of course. The so-called Iron Sand is pure nonsense since it's a lie. But he really saw them fighting other teams and also saw how Zack controlled the shuriken that he threw to his enemy. And from that alone... He determined that Zack already mastered magnet style. Sakumo hearing it was silent for a moment, and after thinking for a second he solemnly said, I heard that the ability of one-tailed beast is to manipulate sand. Are you saying he is a one-tailed jinshriki? It's impossible right? Murasaki exclaimed since didn't believe it. Not everyone has Uzumaki clan sealing jutsu. So it's not easy to get a tailed beast under control. Even more so of how every village uses Jinshriki as their last trump card. So how can he become Keizkiji's discipline and join the tune-in exams? Perhaps Hidden Sand Village has researched a new ninjutsu from one tailed beast. In short, we must be careful. Akaban reminded them. He didn't say it to make them nervous but as a clue them about the opponent's ability. Because after thinking about it, except that he is good at genjutsu and can ignore the effects of magnet style in a sense, the rest of his team will be affected more or less if they face Zack. Such as Sakumo. His short blade is mostly made of iron, so no matter how strong his blade technique is, it will greatly affect Sakumo and Sakumo and Murasaki understand this truth better. Along the way, both Sakumo and Murasaki did not speak, and their faces were always solemn while looking around vigilantly. Such an attitude is almost invincible in tune-in exams. Until reaching their destination, Sakumo took a deep breath and said with his eyes full of fighting intents, I really hope to meet and fight with such a person. And our trip here is not in vain if that happens. There is no doubt that Zack who masters the new ninjutsu is the Hidden Sand Village new generation genius. For combat junkies like him, the stronger the opponent, the more excited he becomes. Stop talking, let's talk about it when we reach our objective first. Murasaki urged. Akaban lifts his head and he can already see the mountains in the distance. Why he was looking at that mountain is because the coordinate position is on this mountain. The mountains of Land of Wind are still desolate, that's why the mountains here are chaotic and dangerous. Fortunately, Sakumo has a nin dog, or else they will get into a lot of trouble before they reach the location. Although Kenma is still small, he is already a very good nin dog with his strong sense of smell that can also perceive the traps on their way to the top. Adding to the fact that someone has already passed the mountain so it made their journey easier since Kenma can follow those smells which made them not encounter any monster on the way. 
and it didn't take long for their destination to appear in front of them. Similar to the root team's base on Konoha, this is a base built in the middle of the mountain. I didn't expect the second team to arrive where your team. When they entered the building, Zack's voice that was a little surprised welcomed them. From the data he read about the participants this time, Orochimaru's team has the better ability and overall quality, while Akaban is also very strong, but they should be inferior in terms of searchability. But it seems that's not the case. Akaban hearing it didn't answer back. He slightly smiled and said nothing and found a place to sit down and without waiting for his team, he already started sleeping. With this hot weather, how can he not be exhausted? When Akaban ignored him, Zack was not discouraged at all, he then looked at Murasaki who was more approachable than Sakumo, and asked, Can I ask where are your other teammates? I don't know, we were scattered when the exam started so how could it be possible to gather together? Murasaki shrugged and followed Sakumo who sat down next to Akaban. When Murasaki sat down beside Akaban, he glanced at the Sand Village ninjas who arrived here first and saw a total of five of them. It should be a merger of the two teams, but with one of them missing, it seems someone died on their way here. Dash. Not long after, there was a sound coming outside. Then a silhouette crossed the hill and arrived here as well. Who is it? Murasaki mumbled as he turned around and looked at the entrance. It's Shin and the others. Sakumo said as he closed his eyes while leaning on his short blade comfortably. And in the next second, someone slowly emerged from the ground using earth jutsu. Sarutabi Shinosuke. After that, Shinyai and Moonlight Night Dance appeared one after another. HMMP. Hidden Sand Kid, I didn't expect to see you here. When Shinosuk saw Zack, he couldn't help but mock them. Akaban who heard Shinosuk's voice opened his eyes and slightly frowned. Looking at the angry Shinosuk, it seems that they have met and fought on the way here. Sorry, we are also anxious about our teammates. Zack bowed slightly and said, but his voice was still flat as Megumi breast, without a hint of apology at all. HMPH. Shinosuke Haramph but didn't say anything more. He fought with Zack earlier and understood each other's strength even if it's a little bit. And he knows that he is not an opponent of Zack right now. Akaban who was sitting thoughtfully while looking at the two then discreetly made a hand seal with both hands. When Shinyai and Moonlight Night Dance approached them and sat beside them, he completed his Genjutsu and pulled both teams into his illusory domain. Entering the illusory domain suddenly surprised all of them. And since Akaban didn't use his painting, the inside of the domain is just a very simple blank space. But their surprise only lasted for a moment like Murasaki who quickly understood why they were here and began to ask what happened to Shinosuke. After an exchange of information, both parties have a better understanding of the strength of Zack. And after the illusory domain is lifted, they see Orochimaru and his team have also arrived. In addition to them, two ninjas from the sand and three from the waterfall village followed after them. At this time, the signal comes from outside. Time is up. This means that, except for them, no one else can qualify for the third round. There are still seven teams left, it's still a lot of people. Murasaki whispered. It's okay, I can just sleep. Akaban answered nonchalantly. At the same time, he looked at three ninjas from the waterfall. And he can see that their injuries are not light, and also the look in their eyes when they looked at Orochimaru is not right. I guess Orochimaru did his magic to them. Akaban thought. Sakumo, who is perceptive, did not pay attention to this. 
because after knowing about the strength of Zack, his fighting intent for his prey became more intense. A few seconds after the signal that signifies the ends of the second exam comes, a vigorous voice comes from a distance. Gather up and prepare for the third competition. And a silhouette jumped down from the mountain and landed in the center of the valley. And after the first silhouette appearance, different kinds of silhouettes appeared one after another from the passage above the canyon. And they are Kiyo, Ibizo, Hatake Sagaki, and other Jounins from the villages that passed the second phase of the exam. And surrounded by Jounin from the Sand Village, the second Kaiskij of the Sand Shaman. And the third round of the exam is here. I'm the head examiner of this exam, Hidden Sand Jounin, Yoji Tanaka, is there anyone who wants to quit now? Asked Yuji Tanaka. Looking around and seeing no one responded, he nodded and began to talk about the rule. This test is a one-to-one -one competition, and the competition is not limited to ninja tool, Kekii Genkai, ninjutsu. If one party admit defeat, the other party is not allowed to shoot again. If there is no problem, let the third round of the exam begin. First round, Moonlight Knight Dance Against. Akaban glanced at Moonlight's opponent who was one of the three ninjas from Hidden Waterfall Village. And although the fight didn't start yet, he already knows who will win between the two. So he just glanced at them and sat in a corner minding his own business, and closed his eyes trying to sleep. Sure enough. It didn't take long for Moonlight to win without breaking a sweat. It's not like Moonlight was strong, it's just it's because of Orochimaru that the three passed the exam. So in the third exam, they are definitely cannon fodder that was placed at the bottom. And with only four or five rounds, the three ninjas from Hidden Waterfall Village were eliminated cleanly without resistance at all. It feels like Hidden Sand Village has control in this round. Murasaki whispered beside Akaban. UN. Now that Waterfall Ninja has been eliminated, isn't it going to be a battle between our village? UN. Hearing Akaban replies Murasaki looked at him and become speechless. It seems this guy is not interested at all and just answered him loosely. After being speechless for a while, he didn't pay him any more attention and look at Sakumo. Unlike Akaban, Sakumo is full of enthusiasm and fighting intent, obviously can't wait to fight Zack right away. But obviously not in the mood to chat. So Murasaki can only sigh and wait quietly. Internal manipulation. Which organizer does not come with a few tricks? Even if it changes to Konoha to organized, they will also do some small tricks. But Murasaki is still young, so it's normal to care about these. Akaban leaned on the rock and fell asleep quickly ignoring what's happening in front of him. But it didn't take long for someone to wake him up. Akaban, it's your turn. Akaban, who was forcefully awakened opened his sleepy eyes languidly and sat up. And when his eyes swept around him, his complexion suddenly changed and became serious. Tsunad who had just returned have her body full of bruises, and she was sitting not far away from him motionless with her clothes torn from sharp tools. In another location, Shinyai was also injured. And when he noticed Akaban's gaze, he laughed with difficulty and said, Be careful, the other side may be a speed type ninja. Obviously, Shinyai lost in terms of speed. Then Akaban looked towards the distance. The place where hidden sand ninjas and Jenin stayed, Zack just sat down. It's him. After that, he looked up again. On the sign that was written, it says Kyorama Akaban vs Umartium Lion. He is not interested in who Umartium Lion is, but Akaban recognizes the person standing behind the sign. That is Ibizo. I understood. 
Akaban nodded and thanked Murasaki for waking him up, and then got up and walked onto the stage. And in the stage, Yumati Umlyang has been waiting for a long time. And when he saw Akaban walking toward the stage, he sneered and said, Although you are good at Genjutsu, I won't let you have a chance to cast it. What boring tactics. Kiyo said without mincing her words. It's fine if it can lead him to victory. Ibizo said with an indifferent expression. According to his calculations, Akaban's Genjutsu is strong, but as long as a skilled ninja interferes with the other side's process of activating his ninjutsu, Akaban will surely be defeated. This point has been verified by Shinyai who was also a Genjutsu user, and with Yumati Umlyang being the fastest genin in Hidden Sand Village, his victory is ascertained is what Ibizo thought. Taneka, who is in charge of the battle, glanced at the top and began to count down. I will use my fastest speed to finish this battle. Yumati Umlyang said then continued, you won't have a chance. On the contrary, Akaban ignored him and didn't even take out the brush and drawing board chakra weapon he had. At the moment start was called out, Yu Muti Unliang speeded up and rushed towards Akaban. However, as soon as he approached, Akaban quickly made a hand sealed with both hands. His hand seal speed is very fast, and he completed the release of Death Mirage Jutsu in the blink of an eye. Yu Mu Tiun Liang, who was in front of Akaban, stagnated on his track when Genjutsu hit him. In the next second, Akaban did not hesitate, he took out a kunai and threw it at Yu Ma Tiun Liang instantly. At the same time, Yu Ma Tiun Liang was relieved from the death mirage Jutsu a kunai hit him. We admit. Ibizo, who saw it, wanted to admit defeat. But before he could finish it, he heard Yumati Umlaying's death scream that made him furious. Akaban looked at him then said, My Genjutsu can be dismissed any time. So to ensure victory, I can only do this. In addition, you are too slow. Akaban bowed apologetically. Then, turn around and leave the stage. Kiyo appeared next to Tiun Liang instantly but the kunai pierced through the heart, and right now there is no medical ninjutsu and medical treatment alone cannot save you Marty Um Liang. So she reluctantly shook her head and fed you Marty Um Liang a pill. The pill is a poison that can make people lose consciousness and fall into a coma instantly. And this is the only thing she can do. A potential strong ninja was killed like that. We apologize for your loss. Akaban comes from Kyorama clan, who has a weak physique, so he didn't have a choice. Hatake Sagaki explained casually. Whether they believe it or not, he didn't care. Shaman who heard Sagaki's excuse was bleeding in his heart, but his face could only twitch and squeeze a smile and said, I understand, we all know the Kyorama clan physique. Besides, since Yu Marti Um Liang voluntarily signed the consent form, the responsibility for his death has nothing to do with Akaban. When Akaban walked to the bottom, his gaze met with Zack who was looking at him. But Akaban just ignored him and continued walking towards his team. Although the two hidden villages signed a peace agreement and reached an alliance, this does not mean real peace. And the tune-in exams is another kind of battlefield. Well done. Tsunad said as she let out a satisfied smile, and leaned back against the wall, and changed to a slightly more comfortable position. Just a little extra, since I am a protagonist of the comic. Akaban answered half-jokingly. Hidden Sand Village wanted to defeat them in a targeted manner so he let the other side know that he was not so easy to mess with. Taneka was silent for a moment. After that, he looked around and said, let's continue, for to the next battle, Mitarashi Murasaki vs Yuzuo Mu. Now it's up to me. 
Murasaki said, then got up and walked to the stage with a large stride. Soon, the battle begins. Everyone at Konoha looked at the battle and felt relieved. Murasaki's strength is very clear to everyone. Although he is not one of the geniuses from his generation, but he can surely win his battle without exposing all of his trump cards. Because of this, Hidden Sand Village seems to have made a mistake in their judgment accessing Murasaki's strength since they send a genin who basically has no chance to win against him. However, Murasaki has other plans, he deliberately conceals his strength to match his enemy and fights back and forth. In the end, with great difficulty he cast a great fireball jutsu that hit his enemy leaving his opponent a heavy injury. Although his enemy didn't die from his heavy injury, with the current medical standards, disfigurement is an inevitable outcome for him. So cruel. Zack clenches his fist tightly. Seimen was fell silent for a moment, Konoha is definitely fighting back. Hidden Sand Village can arrange ninjas to restrain their opponents, and can naturally use the rules reasonably and teach them lessons. So although they lost two excellent seeds, they have no reason to scold Konoha Genin since what they did didn't break any rules they implemented. But if this goes on, with the strength of Genin from Konoha. He glanced at the top and slightly shook his head. The meaning of shaman is very simple, don't make too many small moves. Ibizo froze for a moment and finally sighed bitterly. No matter how much information they collected, the difference in strength is too large. The arrangement that he thought could be restrained turned into a reminder. The next battle, Hatake Sakumo vs Saru to be Shinosuke. A friendly battle. But for Akaban and others, this is not important anymore. Now they one have one target, the ninja from Sand Village they want to protect must be defeated. Who should Hidden Sand Village protect? Undoubtedly, it will be Zack who can use Magnet Style. But it didn't mean they can't fight, so the battle between Sakumo and Shinosuke is slightly tense. Although Lightning Attribute restrains Earth Attribute, but when the ninjutsu is strong enough to overpower its bane, this restraint cannot be achieved perfectly. And the earth style of Shinosuke is exactly like that. His defense is very strong, even with Sakumo lightning style it's hard to defeat quickly, but no matter how strong his defense is, there are always loopholes. Unfortunately for him, Sakumo is the best at catching loopholes on the other side. In the end, Shinosuke admits defeat. After the battle between Shinosuke and Sakumo, the referee gives the winner of the first round a few minutes to rest for the second round. But Shaman's face is getting more and more ugly because it's just the first round, but Hidden Sand Village has one dead and one with a serious injury. If the second round continues like this, he is afraid that the Genins of Hidden Sand Village will be destroyed by Konoha. As for Zack who can use Magnet Style. Yes, Magnet Style is indeed very strong, and it can detain Hatake Sakumo's blade technique, but what about his Lightning Style? And also the Genjutsu of Akaban. Different from the ordinary family's Genjutsu, the Kyorama clan's Genjutsu, is very fatal. Besides, how can they win the game? In addition to Zack, there are three ninjas who won, but how can they be an opponent of Orochimaru in the second round? Rather than taking the risk of losing more from the second round, it's better to lose face and surrender. Land of Wind is very poor and every ninja is hard won, so every generation of Keizkij is very pragmatic. Compared with a ninja's life, a face is nothing at all. Shaman who thought for a long time made a decision in his mind. When the few minutes of rest ended, Shaman who kept silent opened his mouth with a smile on his face and said to Hatake Sagaki on his side. 
The significance of Chunin exams lies in the assessment of ninja ability, not in a competition. With the first round, everyone's ability has been demonstrated, so there's no need to continue the rest of the rounds. The old fellow really can't sit still. Hatake Sagaki thought, but his face was still indifferent, he then looked at the ninja below that he brought here and nodded his head and said. Of course, the organizer of this event is Hidden Sand Village, and you have the final say in this. Then, let's end it here. Shaman said as he stood up then made a hand seal. When they noticed the case kitsch, all the ninjas below where Shaman was located stopped and looked towards him. Shaman took a deep breath, kept his calm and indifferent and declared with his voice circulating throughout the valley after amplifying his voice with his chakra. After three rounds of assessment, everyone's abilities have been fully demonstrated, so as the case kitsch of the sand village, I will declare the end of the tune-in exam. What? Upon hearing it, not only all the sand and Konoha Jenin was stunned, even the referee was baffled when he heard it. Chunin's promotion list will be notified to each village after the discussion, Chunin, please be patient. Seimen indifferently said ignoring the bewildered ninjas. After speaking, he turned around and went back. Let's go. Kiyo sighed softly understanding what Shaman's decision was. Our village is still too weak. Ibizo sighed helplessly. Keizkij's decision represents the entire Hidden Sand village. Although the process was not announced at the beginning, the results undoubtedly showed their weakness to Konoha. And Hatake Sagaki is happy to see this. Since Sand Village taking the initiative to admit defeats, means one more tune-in on their side. Dash. Akaban glanced at Zack. He also didn't expect Hidden Sand Village's case kitsch to end the exam before he can fight Zack. Although whether he can fight Zack in the second round is unclear. At this time, Zack didn't care about Konoha's side, and left in a hurry, wanting to go to case kitsch. Let's go. Orochimru who was silent since the beginning of the third exam, said then turned and left. It seems I can't help you take revenge. Akaban said as he stretched out his hand so that Tsunad could use his strength to stand up. Thank you. Tsunad put her hand on her knee and stood up strenuously. Although her physique recovers quickly, but if her injury is more serious, it will also take a long time to heal. When they left, they followed the ninja of Hidden Sand Village to a safe passage leading to the road outside. After the exam today, we should be able to go back tomorrow, right? Jiraiya asked, and a second later he said excitedly, I am already impatient for going back to let teacher witness my growth. Hearing it, Tsunad immediately retorted. Fool, you won against someone who was weaker than you. What is there to be proud of? Jiraiya didn't rage when he heard Tsunad's mocking tone and instead gave her a contemptuous look and said. Heh. You don't understand. Although what he said was misunderstood by Tsunad. But he cleverly didn't explain it to her. After all, this thing about art, how could the like of Tsunad understand it? Tsunad hearing his mocking tone was shaking in anger. If it's before the exam, she has already beaten Jiraiya with one punch. But now that among the nine of them she and Shinyai were the only two who lost the battle made her lose face in front of Jiraiya. Thinking about it carefully, she can't help lowering her head in despair. The hidden sand village simply looked down on Jiraiya too much and thought he had no ability so they sent their weaker genin to fight. So the battle between the two obviously made Jiraiya obtain an easy win, unlike her who lost miserably to Zack. Don't be sad, victory or defeat is only the result. The specific promotion depends on the method. Murasaki said, comforting her. 
No need to comfort her, if you want to defeat him next time, you better train hard when we go back. Unlike Murasaki, Akaban did not comfort her at all but mercilessly lectured her. Because he knows that Tsunad is not a hypocritical woman in need of comfort. Of course. Tsunad clenched her fists, secretly pondering the training method she will do when she goes back. And seeing Akaban, she suddenly had a better idea of how, and it immediately made her felt much better. Underscore. Going back to their temporary residence, Akaban immediately created a shadow clone. Their return is just around the corner, and the next update of Naruto still has a little finishing work, which needs to be completed today. That's why he can't also be idle and leave everything to his clones. Since in addition to the comic of Naruto that needs updates, he also needs to notify the caravan he brought here. Unlike the ninjas, there are still ordinary people in the caravan, and there is also a comic donation work that hasn't been done yet. I guess I'll stay here for a day or two more he thought. After thinking about it all, Akaban then comes out of his room and walks downstairs, intending to meet his clansmen. But before he could walk outside the residence, Shinyai who was looking around quickly jumped when he saw Akaban and called out to him. Akaban, I want to discuss something with you. Shinyai who approached Akaban for something suddenly becomes a little embarrassed and seems to have a hard time telling what he wants. Akaban who took water with him drank it since it's hot even inside the residence and made a hand seal with his other hand and signaled Shin to continue. After he took a deep breath, Shin finally said, Akaban, I want to draw comics. Putilda. Akaban who have water on his mouth sprayed it out when he heard Shin who was being serious said that. Fortunately, he turned his head quickly or it will be sprayed on Shin's face. He coughed violently and apologized awkwardly before asking, What do you mean wanting to draw a comic? Nothing. It's just Jay suddenly wanted to draw. Shinyai answer. Although you lost once, it shouldn't make you lose your confidence for being a ninja. Since Genjutsu is not for one-on-one -on -one battle and you know it. Akaban said seriously. Genjutsu has its good points and naturally has its limitations. In a way, it is very powerful, but when the other side knows deterring Jutsu, Ninjutsu becomes less disastrous. And it is also the same for Genjutsu including Kyorama. I know what you mean, but me drawing comics is not because I want to escape reality, but it's because I really love doing it. Shinyai said. Knowing that it's not what he thinks, then it's good, and agrees on his request and ask. If this is the case, what story do you want to draw? That's the problem since I don't know what to paint. That's why I'm asking you right now. Oh, so it's like that. Akaban sinks into contemplation after mumbling it, and suddenly thoughts, does this mean if he writes an outline, Shin will finish it? But there are many stories in his previous life, and giving it to Shin like that was like giving a baby a sword to play with. After thinking about it for a moment, he suddenly thought of an old manga a smarter break. Knowing Shin's intention for creating his comics, Akaban is slightly relieved. Since he is not a banyan tree and does not have the ability to form a forest in a matter of seconds. So the more manga being published, the hotter the industry becomes. At this time, his shadow clone vanished and the memory and fatigue returned to him that left him in a state of being exhausted and sleepy. Although it made him tired for no reason, Akaban is still happy since he didn't expect his clone to be so efficient to finish the chapters. So after returning to his room, the updated content of the comic has been completed and compiled into a book. And although the technique is rough, it is very easy for people at the factory to understand the publication. 
Let's send someone back quickly. Akaban took the compiled book and went out to find his caravan. After a few minutes of walking, Akaban saw Kyorama Shiniwan happened to be occupied in comic donation work. And on the side was a hidden sand Jonin responsible for receiving the comics. Akaban, you are here. Kyorama Shiniwan said as he saw Akaban approaching them. Don't be nervous, I just came here to ask Shiniwan uncle to send someone to deliver something for me. Akaban said as he pulled out the updated content of the comics. Hidden Sand Village Jonin glanced at him curiously, then his eyes suddenly shined when he saw the compiled comic and exclaimed, Is that an update for One Piece? Unfortunately, no. Akaban laughed. It seems that One Piece comic is already taking its root in the Sand Village. I wish you could hurry up with its update. My child's head was about to blow up from the suspense. The Jonin explained awkwardly and politely. Child. Aren't you single? The sand ninja who were carrying the comics and also at Jonin's side froze for a moment and chid in his mind, but although he thought of that, he didn't dare to say it out loud for fear of having his head separated from his body and rationally remained silent. Okay. I will send someone back. Kyorama Shiniwan nodded. In order to ensure immediate delivery, he contemplated it and finally decided to let an elite tune in carry it to speed up the process of it being delivered back to the land of fire. Akaban thanked him and went back to his residence to rest since he is really tired. When he arrives at the residence, he notices Hatake Sagaki hasn't come back yet. But it should be to be expected since not only is he their leader, he is also a Jonin from Konoha, and he is probably with others Jonin from other villages talking about important things. According to Akaban's estimation, it is probably tomorrow before they leave this village. Entering his room, although he slept for half an hour in the examination room, he fell asleep shortly after returning to his room. When he woke up, the sky was already bright. Rubbing his eyes, Akaban couldn't help but thought no one called me. Thinking about it made him feel uncomfortable for unknown reasons. Usually, even if he likes it or not, someone will knock on his door to disturb his sleep. But now, no one bothered his sleep, so how can he not worry about it? Opening his door and walking downstairs, Akaban didn't expect to see all nine of them in the living room and couldn't help but said. Hey, if we are about to go back, why no one wakes me up? Akaban, who was expecting someone to answer him didn't expect a silence as a response. Even Psunad who keeps reprimanding him for his laziness just looks at him then once again glance down with her eyes clearly indignant. While the rest were sorting out their stuff like they didn't hear him at all, completely ignoring him. Knowing that something is wrong, he carefully looks at them and found most of them were listless and became confused again. But it didn't take long for him to know why they are like that since the only thing that can make them like that is about the result. Is the result of yesterday exam already out? Yes. The reply didn't come from them, but from Hatake Sagaki who came out next door. He started at Akaban's for a while before continuing, You, Orochimaru, and Sakumo are qualified to be promoted to become a Chunin. Ah, it's not fair. This uncle here win the battle but still didn't pass. Jiraiya shouted unwillingly. Only three. Akaban pondered secretly since this number is not normal. At this time, Orochimaru who finished sorting his stuff asked, Are you going back with the caravan? No, of course, I will go back with everyone. Akaban answered, waking up from his deep thought. These guys probably deliberately didn't wake him up and plan to left him here. Fortunately, he went to bed early yesterday and woke up relatively early. Otherwise, 
he will go back with the caravan that will take so many days to reach Konoha if he wakes up late. Don't think you can laze around if you want to go back with us. Go pack your stuff. Hatake Sagaki indifferently said. Yes. Akaban turned around and began to organize his stuff. Of course, he didn't actually bring anything when he came, just a few portable items, so he finished packing them up in a few seconds and threw them into the ceiling scroll. Without waiting for a second, after Akaban finished, they quickly set off. And it didn't take long for Akaban to understand the meaning of the phrase Don't think you can laze around by Hatake Sagaki since the speed of going back is twice as fast as when they come. Dash. During this time when they were together, Hatake Sagaki clearly understands Akaban's physical fitness so he knows that Akaban can withstand this level of speed. On the contrary, Moonlight was the first to gasp for breath, but unlike Akaban, she still continues running while struggling to support herself even though she was tired and didn't stop to rest. With their speed, it didn't take long for them to formally enter the land of fire. But it also didn't take long for the lazy Akaban to complain. Uncle Hatake, this, isn't this too fast? Moonlight, Shin, do you need to rest? Sagaki ignored Akaban and asked the two. Since it's been a long time of running, even Shin Yai is tired with his brows full of sweat, but Akaban who was complaining only have a sweat on his forehead, that even his gasping breath is clearly disguised. From that alone can be seen who was the real one who was struggling and faking it. Lord, no need. Moonlight loudly said as she clenched her teeth while shaking her head. She knows that she is weak but if she doesn't break her limit, her body will always be in that state. Although she defeated her opponent in the exam, what is there to be proud of beating a waterfall ninja? An enemy like Zack is what she wants to defeat. Besides, Akaban who was from Kyorama clan has a stronger body than her when he is supposed to be frail because of their clan innate. So how can she rest here? I can do it too. Shin Yai also loudly said. Very good. Hatake Sagaki glanced at Akaban coldly and didn't slow down his speed. What a bunch of training madmen. Witnessing it, Akaban couldn't help but think. If he knew this will happen, he should have stayed a little longer and left with the caravan. As everyone knows, Moonlight is already very tired. However, since their teammates insisted, they could not refute, and could only support her silently. Looking at her, Hatake Sagaki slowed down a little. Seeing the gate of Konoha, Moonlight who was physically and mentally exhausted almost lost consciousness. If you have a poor physical condition, enhance your willpower and make your willpower strong to overcome your physique, then your sword will be unbeatable. Hatake Sagaki coldly said. Yes, I understand. But hearing Hatake Sagaki words, Moonlight Night Dance insisted forcibly on tempering her willpower. Willpower. This is Samurai's training. Although Akaban can't understand it, he admires Moonlight Night Dance will. Like Moonlight, he also has a weak body at the start so he understands how difficult it is to support a weak body to keep up its speed. Reaching the gate, Hatake Sagaki turned his head, he looked at Moonlight at his side who has her whole body trembling from exhaustion but still standing and a smile appeared on his face and said, Go back and rest, if you want to learn more about Kenjutsu, you can come to the Hatake residence to train. Yes. Moonlight Night Dance hearing it was filled with joy. Her clan was not a real Kenjutsu user since it's derived from the second Hokage. But Hatake clan is different. In Warring States period, they are the famous Samurai clan. After the ninja era came, they integrated Chakra and Ninjutsu to create sword art. 
Hatake Sagaki saying this sentence, almost expressing that he would accept her as his disciple, so how can she not be happy? The rest can also have a good rest and wait for the tune-in ceremony to be notified. Yes. After that, Hatake Sagaki left. Moonlight Night Dance who was supported by Sakumo was walking slowly, and said, Everyone, go back, I'm fine. But Tsunad walked up to her, she checked her body with a various method and after a few minutes she nodded at everyone and said, She's okay, with a rest she will be fine. I and Murasaki will go home with her, so you don't have to worry. Shinyai added. On hearing this, they finally feel relieved. Akaban young master, you're finally back, I, I'm so happy. Kyorama Yun Lane said as tears drop from his eyes from happiness. What happened to you? Akaban asked in confinement as he stopped on his track, he didn't expect Yun Lane to be so excited to see him. And he disgustingly pushes the brother who wants to hug him and thought I just haven't seen him for a few days. But this guy's orientation has become abnormal. Update, where is the update? If you don't update the comic they will kill me. Kyorama Yun Lane who couldn't hold back anymore cried in grievance and his tears of happiness from seeing Akaban become tears of injustice he received when Akaban was gone as he recounted what happened during Akaban's absence without missing any details. Upon hearing what Yun Lane experienced Akaban couldn't help but sigh since it's not strange that it happened since even in his previous world similar things transpired. According to Yun Lane, when the readers can't find Akaban, they then switch their attention to Yun Lane who was the store manager and keep nagging him about the updates of the comic. Since their store is on a sideway that passed by dozens of ninja every day, so when they return to their clan, they stop first on their store to keep nagging Yun Lane about the updates that even their younger brother and sister also stop on the store before they go to academy just to ask about the updates. And worst of all, even the lofty grandma Maito who didn't like to come out of her backyard also came just to urge Yun Lane about the updates. And after diligently answering one by one, how can Yun Lane not break down when even Lady Maito who was a legend in the heart of ordinary people also urged him? Fortunately, Akaban works overtime to finish doing the updates or else it will be mayhem especially if Uzumaki Maito visit him just to ask about the updates. Akaban young master, when can you update it? Kyorama Yun Lane hurriedly asked. It will be delivered tomorrow morning so don't worry, you get the banner and I will go back to deal with the poster. Akaban paused when he said that suddenly remembering something, and pointed at him solemnly, also, don't use the banner from before, and just write what I am going to say. Yes. For Yun Lane, nothing is more beautiful than this news so he didn't bother to wait any longer and quickly went back to the store with Akaban in his tow. The seventh chapter is about tune-in exams and Akaban soon has a poster image in his mind. After arriving at the store, Akaban found a place and sat down and started to draw the poster in his mind. And it didn't take a few minutes to draw their outlines. Yun, ha! The ninja who entered the store was about to call Yun Lane but was surprised when he saw Akaban inside. Sure. Kyorama Yun Lane quickly made a gesture as he didn't want him to disturb Akaban. The visitor nodded his head knowingly, and after walking a few steps softly, he squatted down beside Akaban to look at the illustration. And what he saw can only be described as a weird trio. A gold on back, a weird thing, and a fan. What kind of weapons are these? At this time, the facial features and clothes details are not yet painted, so he didn't recognize them. Akaban who was concentrating on his drawing moved his muscles a bit then turned his head and suddenly saw a man beside him. The look is very familiar. After thinking about it, 
he immediately remembered the name of the other side, Mr. Nohara. I didn't expect you to remember me, ha ha ha. Nohara Cheng touched his head and laughed in delight. It's incredible that a genius like Akaban still remembers his name after so many days. It's because I signed your name previously and also because of letting me borrow your stool that I remember you. Akaban chuckled and started drawing the facial features of the three ninjas at the same time. The faces of these three ninjas are better with paint in them. For example, in Gara, even the eyebrows are omitted. It's all trivial things. By the way, is this poster an updated promotional poster? Nohara asked, pointing to the top. Yes, the comic book should arrive tomorrow. And we are preparing posters and banners in advance. Akaban said and took a look at the painting. Well, the eyes are drawn well. He nodded with satisfaction and continued to paint the other parts of Gara. Facial senses, hair, forehead protection, and finally infused with soul thick dark circles painted on it, and love on the forehead. When the rest are drawn, the picture becomes three dimensional. So amazing! Nohara Cheng exclaimed. Relying only on the rough and shallow paintings, people feel that there is an imposing manner at first glance, which is simply too powerful in their eyes. Akaban slightly smiled and did not answer. After completing Gara, the difficulty of the other two people is even lower, especially Kankuro. And it didn't take long for the illustration to be completed. The three ninja from Hidden Sand Village coming to take the tune-in exam. After the line was written, Akaban directly handed it to Kyorama Yoon Lane and asked him to post it on the billboard at the door. Although this street is not prosperous, many people pass by every day. So hanging it over there, someone will still see it soon. After finishing the work, Akaban was free, and then asked, Did Uncle Nohara come to ask about the comics update? The smelly brat at my house urges me all day. Do you have a son? Akaban who heard that asked in surprise. Yes one or two years younger than you, but unfortunately there is no good innate talent. Nohara Cheng sighed. He is just a tune-in, and the help he can do for his son is only a little. As far as common a ninja is concerned, without the clan teaching, only ninja with innate talent can be trusted. One or two years younger than me. So, his son should be the father of Nohara Rin in the future. Nohara's surnames in Konoha are not many, so maybe what he guesses is right. Akaban pondered for a moment, then sighed a little remembering her future. At this time, Nohara Cheng's expression becomes stagnant, since he suddenly thinks that he still has important business. I remember I still have something to do so I will come over again tomorrow for the updates by. After he finished speaking. He used a body flicker jutsu and ran out of the store. Hey, I. Akaban looked up and was about to talk, but saw him already outside. Do you want me to call him back? Kyorama Yoon Lane said after he finished hanging up the propaganda poster. No, I just wanted to give him some gifts to his child, but it's okay since he said he will come back tomorrow. Akaban said as he shook his head. Underscore. At the Hokage's office. Hatake Sagaki reports to the third Hokage so as to arrange the promotion of Chunin as soon as possible. While listening and reading the report documents, the third Hokage gradually gained some insight. When Hatake Sagaki finished speaking, he took his tobacco pipe, and then he meditated for a while and asked. Let's not talk about the Chunin's promotion first, what do you think of Magnet style? Without a doubt, this kind of ninjutsu is very powerful. Hatake Sagaki answered in a serious expression. Although the magnetic force alone is difficult to deal with, it does not make him so jealous. 
but this time is different. Tsunade's defeat over Zack's Iron Sand attack and Iron Sand defense is enough to show that Hidden Sand Village has found a sophisticated development direction for Magnet Style. Can Lightning Style restrain it? The third Hawkage asked as he frowned. I don't know, I think that Shaman cancelled the second round, maybe because he didn't want us to get more information about their Magnet Style. Hatake Sagaki expressed his opinion. It is very likely since neither he nor the first Kazekage cares about their face. The third Hawkage sighed. Magnet style is really troublesome. Third Hawkage, forgive me for speaking bluntly, I think Hidden Sand Village will not be content with the status quo. And sooner or later, war will come between our countries. Hatake Sagaki said solemnly. The third Hawkage did not answer directly. Instead, he thought for a while and said, about this, let's discuss it later. Yes. Hatake Sagaki bowed slightly. You have been working hard this time. If you have nothing to do, you can go back and rest. I will discuss with Homura about the promotion of Chunin. Yes. After saying that, Hatake Sagaki turned around. And after closing the door, he turned around again in a corner and kicked the trash can on the side. Ouch. Jiraiya whose transformation jutsu was broken couldn't help but laugh embarrassingly. It's over, you can go. Hatake Sagaki said as he glanced at the comics pile in Jiraiya arms with a frown on his face, and left without asking. Jiraiya hearing it quickly got up and walked into his teacher's office while carrying his proud work. The third Hokage just got up and was about to find my Takado Homura, but was surprised when he saw Jiraiya entering his office and couldn't help but ask. Jiraiya, is there something you want to say to your teacher? Teacher, I want you to take a look at my growth this period. Jiraiya exclaimed proudly. The third Hokage slightly smiled, he walked over and touched his hair and said, Sagaki told me that you are doing very well, so you can continue to study the earth style you are good at, but you shouldn't neglect your Tijutsu either. No, teacher, it's not about that, what I mean is about my drawing, please take a look at my training results. After saying it with passion, Jiraiya took the comics he drew with his blood and sweat and handed it to Saru to be Hyaruzen who was stunned. What is it? Hyaruzen was stunned for a moment and unconsciously received it without even understanding the situation. Isn't it supposed to be the result of your training? Although he didn't know what it is, that thing in his hands seems to have a fatal attraction to him that made him keep glancing at it. The cover is not artistic, but the painting style is more delicate, softer and more attractive than before. And looking at the cover, he already has an idea why he is attracted to it. Teacher, it is good, right? It's because I finally found the master who painted the picture I found in the river and begged him for advice to get to my current level. Jiraiya said triumphantly. So that's how it is. Hyaruzen took a deep breath, a picture of a female ninja without clothes automatically appeared in his mind. He still has a deep recollection of that painting since it's that good. And it is exquisite. At that time, when he saw the picture, he thought it was Akaban's work, but due to Tsunade, he didn't have time to verify it. Looking at the cover that Jiraiya did, his painting skills improved 50 to 60% from his previous drawing for sure. And although there is still a huge, Jiraiya who can only draw one page in the past now can create an entire volume. So who cares about that? Hyaruzen's breathing speed up and his heart were repeatedly tested just from looking at the pile of pages on his hand, but when he heard footsteps outside the door, his mind instantly calmed down and his heart demon faded immediately. But Jiraiya who didn't hear it still keeps on urging his teacher expectantly. 
Teacher, take a look. If possible, please allow me to publish this book. Hiru Zen with a serious face ignored Jiraiya and walked towards his desk and put the thing that was on his hand in his drawer under the desk and said. Jiraiya, you are getting more and more impudent, and you brought this thing to a sacred place like Hokage Residence. Ha! Huh. Jiraiya, who didn't know what happened, was stunned and confused. Why are you still standing there, get out now. My! Jiraiya wanted to ask for his drawing to be returned, but when his eyes met with Hairu Zen, he suddenly shrunk in fright. Since you don't know how to repent, go and run ten laps around Konoha. Hairu Zen angrily said. Jiraiya lowered his head feeling a bit wrong. Obviously, his teacher looks forward to it and wants to see it, but his attitude to change this soon. This reversal is coming too fast. As he turned around lifeless, he happened to hit the person who was entering the door. Who? Jiraiya looked up and saw the female ninja with a calm smile. It is you to tame Koharu. Hairu Zen, why are you so angry toward a child? Yutatane Koharu touched Jiraiya's head and said, He just came back from the land of wind, let him go to rest. HMPH, go and rest. Hairu Zen snorted and let Jiraiya leave quickly. Yes. Since his manuscript failed to come back. He reluctantly looked back and glanced at his teacher then left in a depressed mood. Hairu Zen, how are the tune-in exams? Sit down first, I'm going to talk to you about this. Hairu Zen said as he sat down while closing the drawer where he put Jiraiya's manuscript naturally. Jiraiya who walked out of the Hokage building on a depressed moon only felt that everything he had was lost and the world was about to collapse. He who didn't get his teacher's approval, also lost his draft that he drew with all he got. Where is the problem? His mentality exploded and he didn't know where to go for a while. Going back to his house didn't enter his mind since no one waited for him there. After thinking about it, the Akaban comic shop came into his head. If he goes there, he will have a chance to meet Akaban and beg him to play with him to comfort his fragile heart. A good plan. Dash. Unfortunately, Akaban has gone home. He finally returned to Konoha, so he naturally had to go home and report his safety to his parents and the Lolitar in his home. However, as soon as he arrived at the gate of their manor, he saw Loli Tomiko running out of the house. Her perception is really so strong. Akaban sighed for a while, he knelt down and rubbed the girl's hair after she reached him. Artilda I miss this softness. Don't rub my hair, it's just combed. The little lowly childish voice sounded as she resisted, but it was useless. Akaban ignored her plea and enjoyed it again for a few seconds, then he got up and said, let's go. Big brother will show you your gift. Gift. Little Tomiko exclaimed in surprise. So lazy big brother, remember to bring her gifts. Unbelievable. Well, it's just a small gift. Akaban said as he walked into their courtyard and took out the ceiling scroll to unlock it. After that, a bunch of things came out. Little Loli sweat a little seeing these and thought are these a gift. Akaban was a little embarrassed. He used a ceiling scroll for the first time and forgot to control the things inside. He rummaged through the pile of things and finally found something after a long time. Akaban, what are you looking for? Kyorama Kiko, who hasn't seen Akaban for a long time also comes out of their house to greet her son. But when she saw the thing on her son's hands, she couldn't help but ask curiously. Akaban pulled out the thing, held it up and said, it's the Hidden Sand Village special product. Hidden Sand Village special product. 
Little Tomiko came over and looked at the thing at Akaban's hand carefully, what is this? A puppet. Akaban handed it to her, but... Izumu who also followed his wife rushed over when he saw it and grabbed it before Akaban handed it to Little Loli and scolded, Akaban, why did you give such a dangerous thing to your younger sister? It is not dangerous, the hidden weapon was unplugged by me. Akaban explained. This puppet looks very cute like a cat, so he brought it back thinking of Little Loli. Really? Kyorama Kiko coldly snorted, obviously doesn't believe it. So she checked it over and over again until she was finally sure that there was no risk, before handing it to Tomiko. Seeing how they didn't believe him, Akaban is helpless. Little Tomiko took it and looked at it up and down as if studying the structure of puppet. And it didn't take long for her to condense chakra with her fingers and with a sway of her finger. The puppet cat followed up with its paw. Afterwards, she fiddled with her five fingers, and the cat puppet turned around and waved to Akaban and Kyorama Izumu and Kiko, looking very cute. Kyorama Izumu, seeing it stared wide-eyed, his face was incredulous. Is this a puppet manipulation? Tomiko, when did you learn this technique? Akaban asked, somewhat surprised. Little Tomiko controlled the puppet with both hands and laughed happily. And when she heard Akaban's question she said without hesitation, I haven't learned it, but I feel that it can be controlled like this, and it is much easier than sealing jutsu. When Akaban heard about the ghost-like magical technique that even he can't understand made him blushed and feel ashamed in his heart. In a sense, what she said is true. Puppets are difficult to control, but the essence in chakra threads manipulation and sealing jutsu is from the same wavelength. He he tilde. Tomiko became happier as she played with the puppet. She controlled the cat puppet with her both hands, and the cat puppet jumped agilely in the sky. If someone from the sand village saw this scene, they would definitely crawl back to their village under the sand from shame. Because, although Little Loli is only six years old, if she fights Jenin using a puppet, her control alone is enough to defeat many Jenins older than her. Kyorama Izumu who was watching Little Loli flawlessly controlling her puppet felt very ashamed. It stands to reason that Genjutsu user chakra control is also very strong but the two children in front of him seem to be better than him. Thank you for the gift from Big Brother, I like it very much. Tomiko said after she thoroughly mastered Puppet's control, with the cat puppet jumping flexible and free on her shoulder like a real cat. Too strong. Akaban secretly marveled. Uzumaki clan is a really amazing clan with their chakra and control ability alone is enough to make people envious. Then I'll play more inside the house brother. Little Loli happily ran into the house while the cat puppet followed her like an obedient cat on her trail. If he didn't see it, Akaban would think of it like a real cat, not a puppet from how flawless her control is. Akaban shook his head bitterly. Then I will prepare our food. Kyorama Kiko said as she also followed little Tomiko inside. Her innate talent is too terrifying. Kyorama Izumu said as his tone was full of worry. She has the bloodline of Uzumaki and also the child of their clan leader so it's not weird for her to have an amazing talent. Akaban sighed. With such a good innate talent, I am afraid it will be difficult to be ordinary in the future. More than that, what he was worried about the most was about the nine teeth. Uzumaki Maito is not young anymore. In case there is any problem in the future, one must be responsible for being the next generation nine tails Jinshriki. The better the innate talent, the higher the probability of becoming a Jinshriki. Forget it, let's worry about it when the time comes. Akaban shook his head as he thought of it 
thinking about what will happen in the future is useless, and what he should worry about is the present. Moreover, it is not a bad thing for her to master puppet Jutsu. Since after transforming the cat puppet into a weapon, he didn't need to worry about her safety since she can protect herself. I'm going to take a shower first. Entering the house, Akaban suddenly recalls the important things about being a puppet master. Puppet manipulation is not difficult to learn. For example, after the latest plot is drawn, the exchange of chakra threads and puppet manipulation is also on his list. The hard part is making puppet. Such a delicate work. It would be good if someone knows how to make puppet so that I can make a puppet show in the future. Thinking about it for a long time, A. Kaban lightly sighed. Although dreaming is good but without capital, it's impossible to start. Just like him who has so many things to redeem in his system list, but without enough points, the only thing he could do was look at it. Things like Puppet Master Jutsu require hundreds of points, but since he can't use it, he is not interested in redeeming it. And there's also Bakugan and Dancing Leaf Shadow that he can redeem. Although Bakugan is useless, the Dancing Leaf Shadow that Rock Lee used is worth redeeming. The exchange price of Dancing Leaf Shadow is relatively low, only 50 points are needed. And Akaban has more than 800 points, so he redeems it directly. After the exchange, he still has 700 plus. And as long as the update is released, it is not difficult to earn the remaining 200 points. A wait is all I need. Mumbling it, Akaban entered his rooms and directly took a bath. Dash. At the manga shop. Jiraiya rushed over eagerly, only to find that Akaban was not here at all. Akaban isn't there. He just left, he may be home now. Kyorama Yoon Lane replied. But it also made him feel something is strange. It stands to reason that Jiraiya has just separated from Akaban, so why come to look for him again? He pondered, and still asked. Are you looking for young master? I want to ask, no, no, it's all right. Jiraiya wanted to say, he wanted to ask Akaban about his painting skills and why he was not recognized. But thinking about it carefully, Akaban said he didn't want people to know that he would paint this kind of painting. So if he said it right now, it might cause trouble for him so he didn't continue what he was going to say. After saying goodbye, Jiraiya walked out the door and glanced at the poster on it. This poster. Oh. This female character is so cute. Jiraiya seeing it, made his eyes trickle like a child. After looking at it for a while, he then simply moved a bench he saw and sat under the poster to observe it carefully. This guy, is thinking about something again. Kyorama Yoon Lane's face went dark. Jiraiya's paintings are no longer a secret in Konoha. The passionate and unrestrained style of painting attracts a large number of people, but it also makes many people feel ashamed. Unfortunately, he is one of those people who hate that kind of painting. But thinking that Jiraiya is Akaban's friend, he can only turn a blind eye and let Jiraiya sit there. Since him sitting there does not affect the promotion anyway. He he he, how do I didn't expect this type of clothes when it's this cute? Jiraiya mumbled as he kept on taking out his drawing board and paintbrush while smiling foolishly, then he started working on it. His painting skills are very intriguing. When he draws a male image, it looks very rough, but when it comes to the female images, they are the opposite of the male since when he draws them, they are both exquisite and delicate. What the hell is this guy painting? Kyorama Yoon Lane clenched his teeth, restraining his curiosity. So cute, I really admire myself. 
After the first draft has been completed, Jiraiya couldn't help but praise himself like an idiot. His drawing is almost finished with only the details left. Seeing him painting while watching the poster, Kyorama Yoon Lane had a bad guess and thought this guy is not copying young master illustration right. The more he thought about it, the more he felt it was possible. And quickly rushed towards Jiraiya ignoring his customer. Hey, how can you, well. Kyorama Yoon Lane who was about to burst out suddenly stopped and exclaimed when he saw the content on Jiraiya's painting board. But when he recalled what he said, he couldn't help but back away with redness on his face while pointing his trembling finger at Jiraiya. Whether it is from embarrassment or anger is unknown. The image in that picture is not Tamrai that he thought, instead it was a female character imagined by Jiraiya himself. But if it's just a picture of a female character, he wouldn't react like that. But besides the female ninja that Jiraiya imagined, there are also two puppets he drew. And the two puppets were placed in front and the back of the female character and were entangled with each other so that it made the image impactful. Is the imagination of a child already this potent that even an adult like him was affected by it? Don't say Yoon Lane doesn't know what it feels like. Even a veteran who has been on the battlefield can't stand the power of such a painting. HMPH HMPH, are you so amazed by this uncle's amazing artistic creation? Jiraiya said triumphantly. This painting was made by him, and after drawing the character, a whole story quickly popped up in his mind. I have to say, this guy is really talented when it comes to something like this. And not that good. Kyorama Yoon Lane stuttered like a little boy feeling ashamed. I can't forgive myself for being tempted by that kind of painting, he thought. Yoon Lane big brother, it's not good to lie, why don't you have to be honest with your feelings? Jiraiya said as he twitched his lips contemptuously. Obviously, you like it very much when you have that kind of reaction, and you still deny it. Your behavior is too shameful. Shut up. Kyorama Yoon Lane was even more embarrassed. He. Jiraiya glanced at him disdainfully, and at the same time confirmed what was in his mind. The painting that he gave to his teacher that should make normal people bleed when they read it was not attractive to his teacher at all. So it's not that there is a problem with the painting he made but his teacher's realm is just too high. As expected of the teacher. Jiraiya sighed in admiration. Hey, what are you doing, don't draw here. Kyorama Yoon Lane who couldn't take it anymore rage out in humiliation and the only thing he wants was to make Jiraiya left the store so his mind could also calm down. After all, that kind of painting. When he thinks of the picture, he has an endless heart demon in his mind. Understood, I already understand the problem anyway. Jiraiya didn't care as he whistled happily, and at the same time carefully packed his tools, put away the drawing paper, and started thinking about his new problems. How can I get teacher's approval? It's really difficult, and Akaban gave me this kind of a big problem. He sighed and reflected in his heart. If he wants his teacher to recognize his work, there is no doubt that his plot and drawing skills should be improved. Believe in yourself, you are the invincible Jiraiya. I must let the teacher approve. He clenched his fist and cheered himself to keep it up, and then ran out happily, ready to find a place to slowly ponder about the plot of his new masterpiece. Dash. At the Hokage's office. Hairu Zen sat down and couldn't help but relax after Yutatain Koharu left. Fortunately, he has a great wit, or else when Yutatain Koharu saw it, he would really lose his face as the Hokage. However, when he relaxed, his heart started to itch again. Although he only saw the cover at the time, 
he could guess one or two of the plots inside. Should I see it? Hyruzen hesitated for a moment, and after thinking about it, he took out his crystal ball. Peking Jutsu. It didn't take long for the outside picture to appear on it. The picture on the crystal ball starts from Hokage's office and moves around slowly. After a while, he spied on the surrounding area. No one at the moment. Hyruzen quietly lit his pipe to ease his excitement and locked Crystal Ball Jutsu outside the Hokage's office. It is for Jiraiyasake, I know it's not easy to draw this many pages and since he wants me to check it, I will help him point out any advantages and disadvantages on his story. He secretly persuaded himself, and quickly took out the manuscript Jiraiya gave him and put it on the table. In the cover is a female ninja, which looks similar to the female protagonist painted on Akaban's comic with several points of similarities. Obviously, this work is a copy of Jiraiya. Hyruzen turned to the first page, and couldn't help but mod with satisfaction, there is a separate plot at the beginning, which is not bad. And with the heroine being painted beautifully, plus points. Unconsciously, he has sunk in it with his whole body. At first glance, Jiraiya's paintings are not exquisite, and the character details are completely incomparable with Akaban. Page by page, the wonderful and exciting plot makes Hyruzen unable to stop reading it, and it made his heart beat faster and faster. In the beginning, he only gave a good evaluation but after seeing the wonderful plot it is definitely a perfect work. Hyruzen's eyes were already fiery hot, and when he was about to flip for the next page, but suddenly... HMPH. A scoff came. Hearing it, Hyruzen's expression was stiff, and immediately knew it was not good. But in the end, he is a great man. Even if someone is in front of him, he still is neither slow nor hurried. He closed the comic indifferently, took a breath of cigarette comfortably, and said, Danza, you are looking for me so is there anything wrong? Hi Ruzen, you really have a thick skin. Danza spits out mercilessly and then sat down unceremoniously. The two are enemies while also comrades in arms. Oh, what's the matter? Hyruzen gave a light cough and asked again. You used to be like this, using your shameful skills to do some ridiculous things. Danza continued without answering his question. Upon hearing it, Hyruzen clenched his hand, the flesh on his cheeks trembled slightly. This guy is doing it deliberately. Taking a deep breath, Hyruzen recovered his calmness and let Danza stay there. When Danza saw that he didn't respond, he looked up and glanced at the calm Hyruzen, and then no longer continued to stimulate him. And said as if the previous episode didn't happen. I came here because I heard about the magnet style. Oh. Hyruzen smoked in shock and motioned for him to continue. I think Hidden Sand Village should be investigated to find out to what extent their magnet style has reached. Danza solemnly said. As a new type of force, the threat it has to Konoha is also unknown. So far, Hidden Sand Village only has the ability of sands, but now they hand the magnet jutsu, so it's not weird for them to also have other hidden jutsu. Once a scale is formed, and they lack understanding, Konoha will surely become passive in the future war. I understand, but what do you want to do? Have Anbu infiltrate and slowly investigate. Danza replied. Magnet style jutsu development originated from 2nd K's Kij. If you want to obtain information, you must go to Shaman or start with that child but the identity of that child is probably a case kitch candidate for the next generation. So if something happened to that child, isn't it the same as waging war? Hyruzen sighed. He also wants to figure it out, 
but obviously now is not the time. Danza is also aware of this point, that's why he added the word infiltration, but infiltration is too difficult and the failure rate is very high. In an enemy country, doing an infiltration will definitely lead to one's death. And Hyaruzen cannot accept this price. War is not terrible since the land of wind is more difficult than us. They will bow their heads first. Danza coldly said. And then. Hyaruzen said as he put the thing he was reading earlier back to the drawer artlessly. At this time, the two keep arguing, both of them still have different political views. And their argument could not be finalized and fell silent. Well, since you said that, I will take a trip myself. After a few seconds of silence, Danza finally said and left the building. It doesn't make sense. Hyaruzen thought feeling irritated and took the manuscript back to the table. Danza's arrival interrupted him who was already in the middle of the story. When he was about to read again, he suddenly stopped and got up from his seat then walked towards the door and locked it so no one would come in without him noticing. After doing it, he came back and sat down and continued reading. Jiraiya's comic is really good. But if I let him publish a book, forget it, I will try his word first before he can publish it. Who would agree to publish Jiraiya's book with his age if he doesn't help him? After all, not everyone is a Kaban, who can make a deal like that. However, Hyaruzen did not know that Jiraiya had already started a new creation outside of the Forest of Death. Female Ninja Series, Desert Flower Teacher, just you wait, I will definitely create a work that you will recognize. Jiraiya claimed with his eyes burning with passion, and besides him, there are already several pages of his comic. Full of energy. If Akaban has this momentum, the comic update may speed up a lot. After drawing for a while Jiraiya suddenly felt a little tired after drawing a few pages and pack his things and planned to head home. From the morning till now, it seems that he hasn't eaten anything yet. Since suddenly his stomach kept growling when he was walking. At first, he didn't feel it due to excitement, but when it passed, a strong sense of hunger suddenly surged in his body. No, I have to go faster. Jiraiya quickened his pace, but when he passed by the comic shop, he saw that the caravan carrying the manga had arrived. A bunch of workers are unloading goods and transporting down the comic that has just been printed. And when he saw a familiar face his eyes shined since he suddenly thought of a good idea. Akaban seems to be looking for his cooperation. Jiraiya, who was hesitating whether to ask if his book could also be published like Akaban, suddenly felt someone's hand in his shoulder. Jiraiya, what are you doing here? Akaban asked with a smile as he looks at Izumi Yamano from a distance, and hearing no reply continued Did the third Hokage agreed to publish your book? No, not yet. Jiraiya answered as he lowered his head, feeling ashamed. After all, Akaban taught him to draw, but it turned out that he couldn't impress his teacher. So he was feeling ashamed of himself. You have to work hard. If even the third Hokage can't be impressed, it will definitely not become popular if you publish it. Akaban sighs, feeling a little regret about it. Yes, although what I drew can make Brother Yoon Lane excited it must be because teacher standard is too high. Jiraiya said. Yoon Lane. Akaban looked towards the store in surprise. He didn't expect Kyorama Yoon Lane to also have this kind of fetishes. Sure enough, you can't judge a person by their appearance. He he tilde although my first work didn't get approved by the teacher, it's alright, since I thought of a new plot for my next comic that the teacher will surely recognize. Jiraiya exclaimed vigorously with excitement on his face, 
just thinking of his teacher recognizing his work made him want to draw again. But it didn't take long for his excitement to become an embarrassment when he heard his stomach rumbling. Growling tilde tilde. Akaban gave him a weird look, and asked, You didn't eat yet. I have to go to eat first, later I will give you my comic so help me see if there is a need for correction. After saying that in a hurried manner, Jiraiya clutched his stomach and ran into the village quickly. Too hard working. Akaban, what are you looking at? That guy is promising, maybe you'll be able to cooperate with him in the future. Akaban said half jokingly. Yamano Izumi followed Akaban's gaze with his own and saw Jiraiya running so fast that he only saw his back for a moment. But his hair is so eye catching that he can recognize it at a glance, so it's the kid with white hair. Yes, I also saw his work in the last comic show. So that's how it is. Akaban laughed tacitly. After Yamano Izumi finished speaking, he immediately felt a little embarrassed. But he is the director of the factory, and cooperation is not a small profit for the factory itself, so he suppressed his embarrassment and continued to say, if he really wants to publish a book, he can contact me at any time, even if the factory is busy, I can also ask other people to help with the printing. Let him speak about this matter himself. Akaban said. I see. By the way, where is the update of One Piece? Yamano Izumi asked. The day after tomorrow, I will finish it at that time. One Piece. Akaban was taken aback. According to his original plan, he really didn't arrange the update of One Piece. But after earning points tomorrow, he can exchange for chakra enhancement. After all, if his life force and chakra are enhanced, his shadow clones can last longer before they disappear. And with two clones working together, completing chapter 2 of One Piece is manageable before the day after tomorrow. It just happens that there are only more than 200 books in this batch. So I will send another batch the day after tomorrow, and I will get the update of One Piece by then. Yamano Izumi said. The sales of Naruto in Konoha have three four hundred copies, and more than two hundred copies are obviously not enough. No problem. Akaban glanced at the sky, he was thinking of entertaining them but it seems not possible. After pondering, he sent a clone to order a few boxes of fruit. Half an hour later, the caravan bodyguards finished unloading the comic. As it was too late, they brought the fruit and hurried back to the factory without stopping. Akaban saw them off and when he didn't see their silhouette anymore he intended to also go home and lie down for a while while waiting for dinner, but before he could take five steps away from his shop, he saw familiar faces running towards him or to be exact his comic shop. The front runners were Inuzuka Ishii and his dog Iwamaru, and following him behind were Shiminara, Akimichi Keiju and Yamane Kartake. Ha! Huh. Akaban is a little confused. I didn't expect I would be lucky to arrive after it had just been updated. Inuzuka Ishii ran over excitedly and quickly picked up a comic from the shelf impatiently and turned the page. Iwamaru on the other hand who is on the floor agilely jumped on Ish's shoulder, and after looking around, it then lowered its head. Looking at the comic seriously. Inoshikacho on the other hand walked over slowly after they saw Akaban, not in a hurry. However, when they approached Akaban, the only person who greeted him was Narashimi while the other two immediately rushed inside the store and began to grab a comic with great interest. After greeting Shimi back, Akaban couldn't help but ask in a low voice when he saw Shimi's troubled face, Is there a problem? It's nothing, are you also going to the gathering? Shimi sighed after saying the gathering. Gathering. 
Akaban was stunned and thought about who made this idea. Hyuga Keiju Haiko, do you know him? Shimi continued. If I remember, he should be from the Hyuga branch house, I remember him since we were in the same class before. Akaban recalled. The Hyuga clan is in a special situation. Most members will be cultivated in their clan, and Hyuga Keiju Haiko is the only Hyuga clan in their class. When he graduated from the academy, he was on the same team with Inuzuka Ishii and a kid from a Buram clan. But, Akaban and Inuzuka Ishii relationship is very common, not to mention with Hyuga Keiju Haiko. Yeah, I think I understand what you mean. It's very troublesome. Akaban and Shimi thought similarly. One doesn't visit a temple without a cause, and Hyuga Keiju Haiko suddenly organizing a gathering is obviously not without a motive. As for their intention, it is obvious that it's about the Chunin exam. Except for Tsunad, the rest who participated in Chunin exams were not members of the Great Clan. However, all of them added together can form a powerful network with great potential. In addition, the majority of the participants who participated are related to the third Hokage, and there is a high probability among these nine there will be a shadow. Why do people in Hidden Sand Village carry these strange things on their backs? A god, a big fan, and the last one who has an unknown thing on his back. It's really strange. This Gara looks very difficult to deal with. Looking at the three who were reading the comic while chatting enthusiastically at the side. Shimi couldn't help but walked to their side listlessly and glanced at what they were looking at. After scrutinizing it, he said, it's a puppet. And judging from his look, he should be a puppeteer from Sand Village. A puppet. Is this a puppet? No wonder it needs to be wrapped in cloth. Of course, they heard of what a puppet is from their clan, but through childhood, none of them has seen what a real puppet looks like. Akaban, I heard that their puppet can pretend to be an adult, is it true? Yamane Kartake asked curiously. It is indeed possible since it is a ninjutsu similar to transformation jutsu, but their principle is different. Akaban nodded. Since he has seen this kind of camouflage in his battle against a sand ninja. In Yuzuka Ishi rubbed Iwamaru's head, at the same time, he said enviously, it's amazing, but it's a shame that I can't participate in the Chunin exams. Chunin exams is like a second battlefield, and there is nothing to envy about it. Akaban sighed softly. Although the theory test is normal, but that's all since when the second exam began until the third, it really became a small battlefield that even if you are killed, your teammates can't get a revenge for you. Still, it's already amazing to be able to go to the tune-in exams. Yamane Kartake exclaimed, after all it's the first tune-in exam after the war, and if you can be promoted it's even more incredible. Shimi glanced at Akaban and leaned on the pillar of the comic room without speaking. Promoted to be a Chunin. Then the one in front of you is very likely to be promoted. Shimi thought inwardly. Is Chunin exams dangerous? Of course. Akaban answered with a solemn expression and then said, I will draw some thoughts about the Chunin exams into my comic and make a summary for it. So the plot behind it is the tune-in exams. Akimichi asked as he put the comic book in his right hand and stuffed snacks with his other hand, making him extremely busy. I'm excited just thinking of reading about it. In Yuzuka she said as he turned to chapter 36 and saw the handsome character on the page with no pupils and asked incredulously, is this character from Hyuga clan? He really looks very handsome. Those eyes are unexpectedly cute. Not handsome at all, Bakugan is really scary. In Yuzuka Ishii hearing their praise couldn't help but retort loudly. 
and Iwamaru on his shoulder seemed to understand and couldn't help to nod. Why do you think so? Akaban asked since he was interested why he said it like that and moved to a small bench and sat down waiting for him to tell his tale. Inoshikacho also enthusiastically gathered around his side, waiting for Ishii to talk. One time when we went out on a mission, Keiju Haiko was on night duty, and I got up in the middle of the night to take a piss. As a result, when Inuzuka Ishii said this, his body couldn't help trembling. Everyone who listened pondered about what he said and a picture emerged in their mind. A white eye with veins emerging near his eyes after using Bakugan. When you saw such a pair of eyes in the dark after waking up. Thinking of this, sympathy appeared on everyone's faces. It's really hard to be a ninja. Kyorama Yun Lane muttered to himself with some fear, as if he was lucky that he had no talent to become a ninja. Woof. Woof. Iwamaru barked twice as if comforting his master for what he experienced. Because of his experience with Bakugan, Ishii immediately turned over the page and saw the other team of Neji and his focus was especially on Rock Lee. This ninja with watermelon rind hair is so funny. Is this guy also strong? Yamane Kartake wanted to taunt mercilessly, but turned to the next page and saw that the watermelon rind ninja like a wind generally appeared between Sajuk and the genin named Nakanin, blocking their attacks. The funny guy just now is obviously a disguise. By the way, did you forget, we came to invite Akaban for the gathering. Shimi said aside heavily. When he is with these three, he always feels tired since he is like their nanny. Yes, the gathering. In Yuzuka Ishii, who was immersed in the comic, jolted from his seat. Because of the comic, he forgot about the gathering. Barbecue. Barbecue. When it comes to eating, Akimichi's eyes are shining. Then. Let's just bring the comic over, since it's also good to read it while eating right. After saying that Yamaneka got up and took a bunch of comics on the shelf. After taking a dozen books in one go, he took out 2000 Ryo and handed them to Kyorama Yun Lane. Hey, I didn't even say that I will go. Akaban said with a headache. How can you say that? Let's go together. After saying that, Inuzuka Ishii grabbed Akaban's hand while holding a few comics in his other hand, and walked to the barbecue restaurant with Akaban in tow. Akaban was helpless, so he could only call out, Yuyun Lang Big Brother, please tell my parents. No problem. Kyorama Yuyun Lang smiled brightly and thought. With young master's contacts getting wider and wider. Maybe the Hyuga clan will also come frequently to buy comics in the future like the Uchiha. This is really very good. Then brother Yuyun Lane, we are going. Narashimi said as he exhaled and followed everyone. Dash. There are not many Konoha barbecue stores. So it didn't take long for Akaban and the rest to find the place. And when they approached the store, Akaban saw Orochimaru who was also being pulled to the store like him. And the person who dragged him was Shinyai. Akaban and Orochimaru looked at each other, and each saw the helplessness of the other side. After going to the Land of Wind, the nine of them experienced the virtual illusory domain and tune-in exams which made them quite close to each other. So it's not weird for Orochimaru to come when it's Shin who invited him. But if it's other people, then for sure Orochimaru wouldn't give them any attention and ignore them like a. Eh. Since we are here you can let go of my hand Ishi. Akaban said as he broke free, and then tidied up his clothes. After all, he has to take care of his image even when he leaves his house. If he enters the door while still being pulled all the way, he will be embarrassed if that happens. And as if they have a tacit understanding, Orochimaru also made the same move. 
and the two of them glance at each other again. You guys go in first, and I will go in with them later. Shimi said as he motioned the others to go in. As someone who was also forced to come over, he felt that he had more common topics with Akaban and Orochimaru. You really have it hard. Akaban's words came from his heart. Akimichi Keiju and Yamane take strength are not clear to him, but their characters seem to have such problems. You don't know. Narashimi sighed. Inoshikacho has always been advancing and retreating together since joining Konoha, so he doesn't have any choice in it. Keep it up. Although Orochimaru has a thousand words to say, only one sentence of encouragement comes out of his mouth. After that, he took the lead into the restaurant while Akaban and Shimi followed him. This barbecue restaurant was newly opened recently so the interior decoration is very new. And although the venue is not big, it was enough to accommodate children's inside. After entering the door, Akaban found a table in the corner and walked towards it then sit with Orochimaru. Shimi who was hiding between the two was quickly taken away by Yamane Kataka before he could sit. At this time, Orochimaru took out a comic from the pouch on his waist. Hey, this is the newly updated comic. Where did you get it? Akaban asked in surprise. The comic book has just arrived, and only Shimi and the other three with him are supposed to know it. I take it from Yamaneka. Orochimaru said with a slight smile, as he flipped through the page. When he saw the first page, he was a little surprised, I didn't expect it to be the tune in exams. I thought of this plot during the exam and also finished it after the exam ended. Akaban said. Although he didn't entirely lie since he really finished the chapter after the exam ended. Orochimaru nodded his head and read the comics intently. With Orochimaru reading the comic seriously, Akaban also didn't say anything as he accepted the tea given to him since he really didn't mind the silence between them. After reading the last page, Orochimaru closed the comic with a thoughtful expression on his face. And Akaban drank his tea without paying attention to his expression. After a few seconds, Orochimaru's expression changed. The more he thought about how the Sharingan works the more bizarre it became to him. With Tijutsu, can it really achieve this effect? Orochimaru is not good at Tijutsu and does not have much research regarding it, so he cannot help but ask as he opens the comic again on a certain page, is this possible? What? Akaban leaned over and saw the scene where Lee was kicking Sajuk flying. After thinking about it, he said, the human body has unlimited potential, so with Tijutsu, it is really possible. But it requires a great effort that not anyone can achieve. Besides, Sajuk only has two Tomo so he is not really Lee's opponent. Orochimaru was startled for a moment, then nodded. When he came into contact with a lot of information, he no longer knew anything about Sharingan. So of course, he knew that the more Tomo Achiha eyes have, the stronger their Sharingan. He started at the comic for a few seconds before closing it again. Why he read Akaban comic is not because it's fun, but because it gives him inspiration for his research. And it didn't fail him since with Lee's Tijutsu, he became more interested in it. But this thing like Tijutsu. It seems to be more difficult to study. A human body is really extremely subtle. Orochimaru sighed while saying it sincerely. For example, the body of Yamada that can allow him to recover from any wounds he received thanks to the evil chakra. If he can study a similar effect, maybe he can achieve the effect in the comic without training that hard. But Orochimaru only thinks about it, since Tijutsu is not attractive to him. Human potential is very powerful such as the human body eight gates. Eight gates. 
Orochimaru mumbled since he heard it somewhere. Gate of opening, gate of healing. Akaban one after another said the name of eight gates. Orochimaru has read too many books and has gradually forgotten any things due to it. But when he heard the specific name of eight gates, those terms suddenly appeared in his mind. Eight gates of the human body, limit chakras level. Orochimaru said after Akaban finished talking, explaining what he had recalled. Hearing it, Akaban nodded since what Orochimaru said was also similar to the one that he read on the Kyorama clan library about the eight inner gates. Kyorama clan's ancestors used the idea of eight gates to solve their physical problems, but after researching it, they finally come to the conclusion that the more doors you open in your body, the faster you will die. If there is a record on their clan about it, obviously even the Anbu also has it. With Orochimaru's cooperation with Danza, he must have seen similar records there, so he is not surprised that Orochimaru also knows it. Chakra is a combination of physical energy and spiritual energy. The existence of eight inner gates is a lock that limits chakra consumption to a safe level. So if you turn on the right inner gates on your body, Orochimaru's thinking is very quick. When Akaban reminded him, a bunch of theories appeared in his mind instantly, and then he understood most of the meaning. Turning on eight gates will burst out incomparably powerful power, but opening the human body is taboo because it will cost death. I'm really curious about what it will be like to open eight gates. Orochimaru sighed. He has a little interest in Tijutsu, but upon hearing the eight inner gates, he becomes interested in it again that he wants to research it immediately to know its effect. But if he really studies it, it will likely take a lot of time. We are not Tijutsu users. Akaban advised seeing how serious Orochimaru looked. Although it is very powerful, it can still cause death after prolonged use, which makes Akaban discouraged. Of course. If that side effect is removed then it's really worth opening the eight gate. He thought to himself. I agree. Orochimaru chuckled slightly. At this time, Orochimaru didn't have a fetish for being immortal yet like in the anime, and still cherished his life. While they were talking, some folks wanted to sit beside them but after listening to the topics they were talking about, they felt no room to interrupt so they walked away silently before they got close to their spot. By the way, in the following plots, a big villain will appear. Akaban who suddenly remembered the following plot couldn't help but say after a moment of silence. Oh. Orochimaru raised his eyebrow. He didn't know why Akaban was saying it to him since it's considered a spoiler of the story, but after thinking about it carefully he couldn't help but ask in surprise. Don't tell me you're going to use me. Um, I have this idea. Akaban nodded. When he was about to continue talking, suddenly someone patted his shoulder. When he turned his head he saw Tsunad behind him. What are you talking about, what about Orochimaru? Is it about your comic? Tsunad asked as she naturally sat down at their table, and behind her, Jiraiya followed with a headache. With the two sitting down their table has been fully occupied. Orochimaru winked at Akaban and motioned to him to talk about it later when they are alone, and Akaban slightly nodded to express his understanding. What kind of image? Is it a beautiful L? Jiraiya's words stopped when he saw Tsunad sitting across from him. Because of his headache, he didn't notice her but he immediately shut up and didn't continue what he was going to say. What I'm saying is, I want to use your image for my comics. Akaban explained. Me. No. Tsunad objected quickly. Why? Orochimaru and Jiraiya were stunned at the same time, and they looked at Tsunad a little confused. Especially Orochimaru, 
he is going to be drawn as a big villain and he hasn't even spoken yet, so why is Psyunad so unexcited? How can I allow you to draw me when what you draw is all at our grandchildren's age, how old do you think I am when you draw me? Psyunad exclaimed as she thought of her age at that time. By then, she will be at least over 50 years old. For a girl like her, old age is her greatest enemy. He he Tilda if you say it like that, I'm really curious about what you look like when you become old Psyunad. How about I draw it for you? Jiraiya said as he doesn't understand how important age and appearance are for girls like Psyunad. Akaban and Orochimaru who heard him couldn't help but sigh. This guy is dying again. And sure enough. Boom. With a loud bang. Jiraiya was knocked to the ground with a punch. And Tsunad who punched him had her forehead full of veins from anger and said threateningly. If you dare to draw it, I will remove your hand believe it or not. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jiraiya was so scared that he kept apologizing unconsciously. In front of Tsunad, the only thing he could do was apologize since he didn't want to die young. Anyway, I don't agree. Tsunad exclaimed. Actually, your worry is unnecessary. I remember that Grandma Maito is still so young despite having the age of my ancestors. Akaban was confused at first. But after thinking about it, he remembered that Tsuna didn't learn the Yin Seal yet so she didn't know its effects. Ah, that's because of... Tsuna froze for a bit, and then her eyes gradually brightened, yes, Grandma hasn't aged for so many years, there must be a secret to it. There is this kind of technique. Jiraiya was stunned. Uzumaki clan's physique, right? Orochimaru then explained, her physique plus secret jutsu may be able to reach that level. Uzumaki Maito has appeared in the exhibition, so everyone has seen Uzumaki Maito's current appearance. Obviously, if he came to that conclusion, he should have a study about it. In that case, I agree. Tsunad smiled brightly and agreed. You changed your mind too fast. Orochimaru couldn't help but retort. Of course, after all, I am also very curious about what Akaban will look like. Tsunad answered with a smile. Orochimaru turned silent when he heard it and couldn't help but also look at Akaban with Jiraiya obviously thinking the same thing. Seeing how the topic turned to him, Akaban couldn't help but sigh, and said, not answering directly. Whether I will be drawn in my comic is not certain, I will show it to you when I draw it. For the tune-in exams, he can actually change the other characters' roles, but he feels that replacing Orochimaru's role with other ninjas in the tune-in exam will lose its meaning. Orochimaru understands what he means, so nodded and didn't say any more. He's coming. Tsunad pulled Akaban's hand motioning him to look forward. Hyuga Keiju Haiko. Akaban looked up, this guy was wearing Hyuga clan's iconic clothes, and his behavior was very mature. A skilled politician. Orochimaru coldly snorted, picking up a piece of meat, and each minding their own business and started roasting it. Cannibals have short mouths, but his approach is really unpleasant. Akaban said as his expression remained unchanged still with a smile on his face but dissatisfaction was coming out of his mouth. This guy used his teammate's relationship to let in Yuzuka Ishii help to bring Sakumo, and then used the network of Sakumo and in Yuzuka Ishii to draw the rest of the same clan to form this party. What do you mean? Many of those present will be well-known figures of Konoha in the future, Chiraya. Do you understand that? Tsunad whispered. The location of the four is relatively remote, and so naturally they don't have to worry about being heard. What is this, shouldn't you work harder if you have poor talent? 
Jiraiya said. Although he acts stupid, he really is not. He just didn't want to think about meddlesome things that deeply. That's why he acts like that. After entering the store, Hyuga Keiju Haiko greeted everyone one after another. And finally saw Akaban's position and approached them. I didn't expect you to sit there, the newly opened barbecue shop location is not big enough so I'm really sorry about that. Hyuga Keiju Haiko bowed slightly and apologized. However, the smile on his face made Akaban unconsciously think of Sai in the comic. No, his smirk is even worse than that of Sai. You don't need to care since we happen to like this position very much. Orochimaru indifferently said. No, how can this be? Hyuga Keiju Haiko smiled, you are the elite of our class. No, we said we like this spot, or are you going to ignore our decision? Akaban slightly frowned. Their words should be clear enough, but this guy can't tell good from bad. Hyuga Keiju Haiko's eyes slightly narrowed, but still smiled and said, in that case, I wish you all a good meal. After speaking, he nodded and left their table while walking naturally towards the next table. Seeing the nuisance gone, Akaban looked around for a while. And he can estimate that there are about 30-40 kids that attended this gathering, and half of them come from a clan while the other half are ninjas who have a commoner's origin who successfully passed the exam and became a genin. In terms of food treatment, Hyuga Keiju Haiko treats them similarly. However, with a subtle observation, he can still notice the difference between those who come from a commoner family and those who come from a clan. From what he observed, those who have better strength and aptitude were sitting closer to Hyuga Keiju Haiko. And why Hyuga Keiju Haiko wanted Akaban groups to change seats was also because of this purpose. Dash. We are the first graduates after the war, and in the future. Hyuga Keiju Haiko gently said to all who attended his gathering. Hypocrite. Jiraiya murmured. Eat quickly. Akaban said as he eats silently, ready to leave after eating and dealing with things. Orochimaru seems to have the same idea. The two started eating using the roasting method that can fill up their stomachs in the fastest way, and they didn't care about the taste. As for Jiraiya, just after eating a few slices of meat, he suddenly covered his stomach and ran to the toilet, Arg, It's coming. I'm going to the toilet. Jay, this idiot, obviously had diarrhea this afternoon, but still come when hearing there is a free barbecue. Tsunad sighed softly. Regardless of him, let's continue to eat. Orochimaru took a few more mouthfuls, getting his mouth full of food. His character is neither slow nor hurried, so it is really rare to see this scene. Tsunad still ate neither slow nor hurried and didn't care about their abnormality. After a while, Akaban and Orochimaru stopped. The two glanced at each other then turned their heads at the same time at their surroundings. And saw everyone not paying attention to where they are. Very good. In silence, the two made a hand seal creating a shadow clone and using transformation jutsu at the same time while sneaking away from Tsunad. Tsunad who was sitting with her back facing the entrance didn't notice two suspicious men leaving the shop. After getting out of the barbecue shop, the two men who used transformation jutsu mixed into the crowd. After a while, they went to a relatively desolate place outside Konoha. Orochimaru asked at this time, you said before that you want to give me a role for your comic, so what kind of role? Yes, it's a big villain, equivalent to the big boss of the previous period. Akaban answered. Hearing no reply he then clarified. And your character was the one who schemed against the Konoha using the Sand Ninja and also a rebel from Konoha. At first, 
Orochimaru was still very calm when he heard he would become a villain. But after hearing the words scheme and rebel, he couldn't bear it anymore and turned around and said in surprise, Are you kidding me? No. I am serious. According to my current plot I intended to draw like this. Akaban shook his head and seriously answered. Do you think I look like that kind of person? Orochimaru asked incredulously. Good question. Akaban thought as he squeezed his chin and looked at Orochimaru up and down. After that, he sat down and took out his drawing board and paintbrush, and with the shua shua sound, he painted the scene of Orochimaru researching Yamada's body like a mad scientist. After finishing it, Akaban showed it to Orochimaru. What is it? Because of the darkness, even if the ninja has good eyesight, it is still difficult to see clearly for a while. So Orochimaru got closer and finally saw the painting on Akaban's hand. The drawing shows a ninja who was doing something to the body lying on the ground with its back facing them, but the movement and behavior of the man in the picture are full of evil feeling that even Orochimaru can sense it from the picture alone. Taking a closer look, the picture seemed to be very familiar to him. Is this guy me? The young Orochimaru was confused and pointed at himself for a long time. Yes, it's when you studied Yamada's body. Akaban retracted his chakra, and the ink dissipated automatically on the drawing board clearing the picture on it. Orochimaru's movements stopped, and then he coughed lightly and forcibly calmed himself and said trying to defend himself, different angles will have different effects. The atmosphere fell silent. After a few steps, Orochimaru froze again. He looked at his surroundings and said with a daze, when did we get here? I want to ask where you want to go, but looking at you who have a thoughtful expression, I didn't bother to ask. Akaban said. Forget it, anyway, this period Danza is not here, let me show you my laboratory. Orochimaru said. So that's how it is, this is his laboratory. Akaban looked around and wanted to find the entrance, but since it was too dark at night and he was not a professional sensor ninja he can only look around in vain. Don't look for it, the entrance to the laboratory is not here. Orochimaru said as they walked deeper while taking a turn every minute and after walking for a while, they finally reached a huge rock with a crack on it. But how Orochimaru entered through the crack of the stone made Akaban stare wide-eyed. With Orochimaru's body that was like a snake, he squeezed into the crack on the rock and entered easily. So Akaban couldn't help but think, Brother, you can go in, but what should I do? Come in. Orochimaru who got inside waved at Akaban at the other side and beckoned him. Akaban was silent for a moment. Using a hand seal, he used earth style to cross the rocks. Not long after, he entered the bottom of the laboratory. But there was still a rock underneath. After searching in a circle, he finally found a gap in one corner and entered the laboratory through it. Home, I didn't expect you to find this gap. Orochimaru smiled. Although his goal failed, he didn't care. Akaban looked around after entering. The laboratory is quite big, but it's just a room. And he saw a door on the other side. It seems that the outside may be Anbu's base. He suddenly understood that Orochimaru specially opened the crack in the rock so that he could enter and exit secretly. What do you use for the experiment? Akaban asked casually after looking around for a while. The most common one is mice, because there are a lot of them, and they are easy to catch. Orochimaru replied, next is the rabbit, but once I caught a lost deer, it may have come from Nara clan. You're lucky no one looked for it. Akaban said as he wandered around, and he found a pair of small antlers, from the looks of it, the deer is not big yet. It is a rare experimental material 
so I can only say sorry to Shimi. Orochimaru said, but his tone did not fluctuate. Using these materials, he has developed a soft body transformation, which is really not simple. Akaban was impressed. The current Orochimaru cannot be faulted in any way. Even if the third Hokage finds out that he is doing a research experiment, it is only because of Danza who lured him. Akaban, did you know that, in fact, what I want to study the most is not the ordinary ninjutsu, but the mystery of life and immortality? Orochimaru said as his tone was low and he took Akaban to a corner. After that, he took out his most cherished thing the body shed by the white snake. Snake sloughs. It is said that it symbolizes luck and regeneration. Akaban was startled. The white snakes in Orochimaru's hands and snakes that appeared in manga are the same. Luck and rebirth, if people master these two, they won't die, right? Orochimaru said to himself. Luck is something no one can master. Akaban said. That's right. So I want to research the secret of regeneration. Orochimaru said as he put it back carefully. It is said that Lord First Hokage has a body that can recover from any injuries, but what happened? It's easy to regenerate, but it's hard not to die. Akaban said as he is not really optimistic about it. Even in the manga, Orochimaru seemed to gain success, but he still didn't think it was immortality. Although his body is immortal, his soul is still weak. What you said may make sense, but I still want to try. Orochimaru indifferently said, Akaban, I envy you. Envy me. You can always think of interesting ideas, soft body, reikiri. The important thing is that your paintings are not just fantasy, but also possible techniques that can be created. Orochimaru said. What do you mean? I would like to ask you to provide me with ideas so that you can paint at will, anyway, I don't care about those things. Orochimaru said. Akaban was stunned for a moment. He didn't expect that he would say that. But since it's just to provide him ideas, it's not a bad deal. After all, Orochimaru hasn't mastered the Snake series now. So there are a bunch of ninjutsu ideas he can provide. Thinking of this, he nodded and said, Yes, but I have a condition. What, do you really agree? Orochimaru asked in surprise and his joy was clearly evident on his face. He is eager to get help from Akaban. That's why he wanted to cooperate with Akaban in Land of Rivers before. This time... He just took the opportunity to say it that's all, that's why he didn't expect Akaban to agree. I can provide you with some ideas, but you have to guarantee that you cannot conduct live experiments. Akaban said seriously. Of course. At this time, Orochimaru did not study yet in depth, nor did he ignore life to the point of seeing them as worthless. That's good, then happy cooperation. Akaban stretched out his hand. The two shook hands. Orochimaru estimated that an occupational condition had occurred. So he tidied up the site that felt a little messy. Then he continued since Danza left the village, I suspect that he might have gone to Hidden Sand Village. He is investigating their magnet style right. Land of Wind having new ninjutsu showed how valued that ninjutsu is seeing how an Anbu commander was personally dispatched just to investigate it. Yes. And he has shown me a lot of information recently. At first, it was just about the information about the one tail beast, but now he even showed me the information about the first and second Keizkage. Orochimaru said. This old man is really busy, he first wants to look at the land of Uzumaki, but now he also wants to manage the hidden sand village. Akaban sighed softly. But this is also as it should be by rights. 
According to the manga plot, he certainly knows that Hidden Sand Village has not dared to do anything with Konoha in the past few years. But with Danza's personality, he won't trust Hidden Sand Village. After taking a few steps outside, he then paused and said, If you really want to study the eight inner gate on the human body, I suggest you study how to combine summoning jutsu with digitsu to create your own ninjutsu. Summoning jutsu combined with digitsu. Orochimaru was stunned upon hearing it. Before, he either used summoned beasts for search or reconnaissance purposes so he only summoned one or a large number of them depending on the situation. He pondered and said truthfully, I thought about it, but didn't have any idea how to start. Then you can start from the simpler. Akaban said as he drew a picture at random. What he drew was a ninja who had his sleeves open with several large snakes coming out from it. It's the hidden shadow snake hands. After that, he drew another snake hands with hidden shadows. These two paintings are different from his previous ones. The ink he used is not chakra condensation, so it can be preserved for a long time. And he finished it, Akaban flung them to Orochimaru and lightly said with a smile, for reference only. Orochimaru took it and took a look. What he lacked was ingenuity. So with such an intuitive picture, he suddenly deduced how to achieve it in his mind. It is really good having cooperation with you Akaban. Orochimaru said excitedly, and when he looked up, Akaban that was in front of him suddenly disappeared. It's a bit embarrassing saying it's my own idea. Akaban sighs. But this is also the result of comprehensive consideration. Other techniques are not very helpful to Orochimaru right now. It is better to remind him to complete the technique that suits him first before the other thing. Akaban who was deep in thought finally came back to the village while still using his transformation jutsu. And it seems his clone is still in the barbecue shop. But he didn't go back since with his current chakra reserve, his shadow clone has enough time to last until the barbecue party ends. So, Akaban's direction was towards his house. On the way, Akaban opened his system panel to take a look. His points have risen by more than 100, and it only needs a few points for him to reach the demand for boosting his chakra. Waking up tomorrow, I should be able to exchange it. Akaban thought as he closed the panel. If his chakra strengthens again, his shadow clone can exist for a long time or even a day, as long as the degree of fatigue is controlled. In the barbecue shop at this time, Akaban, can I really rent it? Of course it is true, but the rental price of the latest chapter will be slightly more expensive, so please forgive me about that. On the stage, Akaban was holding a comic book with a professional smirk on his face, while promoting his comic for a rental convenience plan. Underneath him was a bunch of ninjas that were clearly stunned witnessing how enthusiastic Akaban was known by all as lazy to the bone. This guy is a clone, right? Sakumo sighed helplessly. It looks like it is. Murasaki said as he held his chin while nodding slightly. Since the real Akaban, even if he has such a plan, he is too lazy to implement it and will only let Kyorama Yun Lane don't for his stead. Hyuga Keiju Haiko, who doesn't know Akaban, is already dumbfounded. He seems mature and sleek, but in the end, he is only a child. Facing the limelight of Akaban, he really didn't know how to bring the atmosphere back. This guy. Tsunad on the other hand was boiling with anger. Different from Jiraiya, who no longer has diarrhea and is devoted to eating meat. Seeing Akaban's abnormality. She suddenly understood that the Orochimaru and Akaban on the stage were both shadow clones. How dare you not tell me when you both leave, so hateful, hateful. 
I will definitely beat them tomorrow. Boom Tilda. The plates on the table were shaking when she banged her fist on the table. And Jiraiya who was startled unhappily took the meat on the plate and said, Tsunad, don't mess around, I'm not full yet. Eat, eat, you only know how to eat. I'm already full so take it all. Tsunad angrily said as she pushed the plate in front of him. A Kaban shadow clone noticed this scene, his eyes narrowed but seeing how she didn't charge at them for tricking her, the clone then happily continued to introduce his new policy. In comparison, Orochimaru seems a lot calmer. Even if it is found to be a clone, it is still unperturbed and calm as before. Later, Hyuga Keiju Haiko was dumbfounded. Originally, he planned to make acquaintance with everyone who attended this party, and then rat casually until the party was over. Then after that, call all of those who have good strength and go to the bathhouse to play again. However, now that Akaban is talking to the crowd, there is no reason for him to interrupt him. And due to it, a good gathering has become a manga exchange meeting. A group of ninjas holding books, reading comics and discussing the plot with keen interest. And when he thought that Akaban was finally going to stop talking, he then saw him opening the comic and started reading the plot on the book by himself. What the hell? He regrets it so much, he knew that Kyorama Akaban should not be invited. When Akaban finishes speaking, the entire group is full. Most people don't have many thoughts. They don't want to stay in the store when they are full, thinking about going out to play or going home to sleep. So the party also ended with Akaban giving the final speech. Then after that, as if a cue, all the people inside the shop scramble like an ant, leaving the shop empty. Tsunad was even happier as she took Orochimaru and Akaban's hands and dragged them to the corner of the street. Tsunad, what are you doing? Jiraiya didn't know what's going on, so he hurried to keep up with them with worry. Then the next second, he heard a terrible cry. And when he ran over, he didn't see Akaban and Orochimaru's shadow. In the laboratory, Orochimaru is experimenting with the correct usage of hidden shadow snake hands, but suddenly his whole body suffers severe pain. Fuo, Tsunad this girl, her control becomes even more perfect. As he was breathing heavily, it took him to retort. Tsunad's punches were controlled just right so every time her punch hit, it was always in the painful spot. And when it fed back to the original body, Orochimaru's body was aching all over. So he stops doing his research for a moment to relieve the pain. Dash. Compared to Orochimaru, Akaban is much calmer. To enjoy the convenience of Shadow Clone, you must bear the possibility of being pitted. So although his clones got beaten up, Akaban was prepared for it so it didn't hurt him that much and sleep peacefully after recovering from it faster than normal due to his physique. On the second day, when Akaban gets up, the first thing he does is to open his system panel. 1058 points. Exchange, half immortal body chakra enhancement. Uzumaki clan's chakra is much better than an ordinary person. And as soon as Akaban exchanged it, Chakra quickly burst out into his body. Speaking of Chakra, his Chakra reserve is not that small due to upgrading it, but after redeeming the other half, the Chakra inside his body seemed to unlock and open something inside his body that made his Chakra reserve double. After a few seconds, he gasped for breath, and a lot of cold sweat broke out all over his body. His chakra has exploded, and the feeling is not at all refreshing, but rather painful. Akaban got up and took a shower. After that, he left a clone at home and asked him to work overtime. He promised to submit the update of the One Piece in the morning, so he couldn't delay it. 
Walking downstairs, Akaban found that little Tomiko's eyes were looking at him strangely. Big brother, you just... Hush. It's a secret. Akaban slightly smiled, with the chakra fluctuation and increases, naturally, he can't hide it from Tomiko who has an innate high perception ability. UN. Little Tomiko quickly nodded, and the cat puppet on her shoulder made a sure gesture that was not rather cute. Her puppet control has become more and more mature. Such an innate talent seems difficult for her to live without being a ninja. Akaban thought in his heart and couldn't help but sigh. When breakfast came up, Kyorama Izumu leaned over to the table and asked as he ate, Are you busy today? Um. Time can be arranged freely, what's wrong? Akaban is a little confused. Kyorama Izumu seldom interferes with his usual activities, and this is the first time for him to inquire about his plan. Hyuga clan, send an invitation letter in the morning. Kyorama Izumu said. Ha! Huh. Akaban was stunned. Didn't Hyuga Keiju Haiko just launch a gathering yesterday? He was stunned for a moment, and then remembered last night's party was disturbed by his clone, which was not a success at all. If you don't want to go, I will let someone from the clan come and do it for you. Kyorama Izumu said. Let us let someone do it for me, the Hyuga clan probably wants to win over us. Akaban took a few bites of his breakfast after answering, then after pondering for a moment he continued, and it's not like I don't want to go. It's just I messed up the gathering yesterday. He didn't say it was his shadow clone and took the initiative to back the pot. Well, I will make this clear to the clan leader. Kyorama Izumu nodded his head obviously understanding why the Hyuga clan wants to win them over to their side. After the tune-in exams, the performance of the nine contestants has gradually spread in the village. Three directly advanced to tune-in, and the others also performed very well, plus the network of relationships formed behind the nine. It is no wonder. Akaban finished his meal and was about to go out and find a place to have a wave. After thinking about it, he planned to go to Orochimaru, but as soon as he went out, Tomiko's voice stopped him, Brother, wait for me. What's wrong? Akaban turned his head suspiciously. It's been a long time since I played with everyone, so I want to go to see Grandma. She said timidly. No problem, and although it is safe in Konoha, you must remember to come back early. Akaban didn't worry about it and said casually. Akaban, you child is not sensible at all, how can she recognize the way of Konoha when Tomiko just came? When Kyorama Kiko heard this she walked out of the house angrily. Akaban was startled. With such a high sense humanoid radar, can you get lost? Furthermore, Lady Maito takes care of you so much. I don't care if you are busy right now. You should visit her with Tomiko. Kyorama Saki continues to scold. Headache. Akaban scratched his head. He didn't arrange a plan to go to Senju clan. He just wanted to temporarily avoid Tsunad. Looking at it now, it seems he can't escape his fate. Big brother, I. No problem. Big Brother will take you on a journey to recognize the way. So if you want to visit your friends, you can go by yourself. Akaban said as he touched her head. Tomiko also walked quickly following Akaban, with the small puppet cat standing on her shoulder. Walking out of the Kyorama clan, her red hair is very eye-catching. From there, many passers-by turn around frequently. After a long time, they reached the Senju clan, but they didn't enter. The Senju clan is in front of you. After you enter. Akaban squatted as he told her what to do. If he can avoid it, 
he will run right after he shows the way. Even though it was the clone that got hit yesterday, the pain and memories that came back were enough to show Tsunade's anger and fierceness. Big brother, are you hiding from Tsunade big sister? Tomiko asked sharply. Akaban's face became stiff, and immediately said, Of course not, I have a good relationship with Tsunade. Oh, is that so? Little Tomiko winked at him as if implying something. Akaban froze for a moment, then patted her head to express understanding. It seems that Tsunade is lying ambush on the side. I'm finished. He secretly complained in his heart. If he had just turned around to leave, he would be caught on the spot, and the consequences would be tremendous. HMPH, you are wrong, I have no relationship with him at all. Tsunade angrily said, he didn't take me when he ran yesterday, and only took Orochimaru, maybe it's Orochimaru with whom he has a good relationship. Cough cough, I also want to meet Lady Maito, let's talk as we walk. Akaban broke the topic and brought Tomiko forward. If you didn't come today, I was on my way to capture you because it's what Grandma wants. Tsunade said. Ha. Huh. Why? It seems to be related to your comic, I don't know the details. With Uzumaki Maito's thinking, even Tsunade who was the closest to her didn't know what she was thinking. Akaban pondered for a moment and decided to leave it alone. Anyway, you can't go to a different place at the same time, so it's better to wait for her to say it to him than guessing incorrectly. He walked to the courtyard and saw Uzumaki Maito lying in the courtyard leisurely, and the seven comics on the side were very eye-catching. She took out all the manga. What's the situation? So you brat still know how to visit me ha? Huh? Uzumaki Maito's tone is indifferent, but with a bit of unusual irritability. I was a bit busy yesterday, so... You only created one chapter for so long after coming back from Land of Wind, you are lazy again. Also, I heard about your virtual illusory domain and it seems such a fun technique, you should let me experience it right. Uzumaki Maito said as she sat up quickly with an angry look on her face. So that's it guys. Hope you like the video. Like share and subscribe the channel. And also tell me your recommendation in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.